right, we have Ryan Rotano. Did I say it right, Ryan? You were right. All right, so I'm on fire for the Yeah, you go. <laughs> All right, Philly guy. That's right? it. Grew up in what, Yardley? I grew up in Yardley, yeah. But, I mean, so I was born in Trenton, New Jersey, but grew up in Yardley. Uh, went to high school in New Jersey. Parents have Beach House, LBI, so kind of grew up in that whole neck of the woods. So anywhere from Yardley, Bucks County, that whole neck of the woods all the way through – gosh all over parts of jersey uh so it's funny when everybody someone's you know we're down here and someone's like where are you from and yeah. i'm like oh, i just say i'm i'm from philly and then they're like well i'm from jersey i'm like well i'm from jersey too you know and then we go back and forth and then my buddies tease me they're like well, where are you from philly or jersey I'm like, well it's hard because i grew up in yardley in, in pennsylvania but yet i went to high school in jersey you know, lived at the Jersey Shore for many, many years. Parents still have a house there. So it's always that in between. I live in both areas. When you moved down here, what was the big, the biggest like shock for you? Because I moved from Pennsylvania too. Mm. And when I moved down, the first thing that got me was how fast people go. Because you know, like in PA, like when you're on the turnpike, yeah, yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah. If you're going five, six, seven miles over the speed limit, they're getting you here. Mm-hmm. Fucking, you know, it's a, I, I first moved down here and I'm on uh, 95. And these guys were going 90 past the cop, which in Pennsylvania you would never get away right, with. Right, right, right. You know right, what right. I mean? Or Jersey, for <clears> that, that matter. Yeah, yeah, they're on So you. I'm slowing down, and I'm like, oh, he's definitely fucked. And they, they don't get fucked. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, it's funny. So I did my college internship for Walt Disney World back, like, when I was in my early 20s. So I had a little taste of what it was like to drive. And, but that was in Orlando, and that's where I lived in Orlando when I first moved from Philly down here. So when I moved to Orlando and I did the college internship, I kind of had – an idea of you know the demographic and how people drive and Orlando is a different animal right because people are on vacation they bang out u-turns in the middle of it doesn't they don't give a fuck it's it's in the middle of anywhere and then you're you're just you have to be very aware of your surroundings especially in Orlando so I kind of knew what I was getting into when I moved from Philly down to Orlando uh, but it's definitely a different animal. Yeah, I have a lot of friends over in Tampa and like Ebor. Mm-hmm. I had a bar. I actually opened a bar over there. It was oh, a, nice, it was nice. A vape bar with uh, you could get beer and wine and everything and shots and whatever. Everything and, all in one. Yeah, but I ended up getting fucked on the deal anyway because I opened the bar and then across and there was no construction at the time when I'm remodeling it, right? And we're there maybe you know six nine months and all of a sudden I see the uh, detour mm. and we were on Ebor City like right down the main street. And the fucking the, the baseball stadiums across the street, so it was perfect area for like a bar with vapes because it was at the time when they they won't let you smoke inside anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now <clears throat> you would come in, now you could buy like a vape, mm-hmm. and then go to the bar and have a drink, and you could vape. You know what I mean? So sure. it, was, it was like a combo. Yep. Well, they decided to build a parking garage for the fucking stadium, and they didn't tell anybody that came in to build. So now the like it's like uh it's like. Old City in Philly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine okay. that being closed. Sure. I'm on Old City yep. in Ebor, yep. uh-huh. and that road's closed. And parking was bad to begin with. So now it's detoured, and they're building a fu- – there's construction everywhere. I got killed. I mean, oh, luckily, no. I didn't lose. Right, right, right. It was open enough to break even, but it could have been something. How bad. long were you there for? Uh, seven months. Seven months, and okay. And just broke even on that one. Got it. But I had two or three other ones, but the bar thing – Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too much of a fucking headache. Yeah, yeah. Tampa's different, man. I- I've been there – when I lived in Orlando, I went out to an Eagles, uh, uh, Eagles Tampa Bay game. But I mean, they have that one shopping area that's over there. It's pretty legit. Uh, but I haven't been over there too often. It's funny. I was I was gonna move to a Tampa originally when I was living in Philly, and I was gonna tra- I transferred with Hyatt Hotels from Philly from on Broad Street, the uh, Hyatt at the Bellevue. That's nice. Yeah, super nice property. So I was in Restaurant 19, gorgeous upstairs. Love that spot. And I moved there, uh, and I was going to go to Tampa, and it didn't work out. And then I moved to Orlando originally. But I was kind of happy that I didn't move to Tampa. But now it's – it's, I mean, people talk about it as a great spot. Now, at the time, this is back in 2000 and uh, – I don't even remember. 2013, I want to say. And there was a lot of like, no, I don't go to Tampa. It's kind of a quiet town. You're from Philly. You go to Tampa, you're going you're gonna to hate yourself. There's nothing to do down there. Um, so I, I haven't been back, but – you know, a lot of people seem to like. I told my parents because they're they're moving to Orlando. I'm like, you got to go down that direction. See, I, I think it's night and day between here and Tampa or Orlando. Night and day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think you can compare like Palm Beach County to anything over there. And, well, <laughs> and for me, from Philly and you, I would assume, and you, you've lived here all your life, right, Dan? 
I have. I pretty much grew up in Florida. Yeah. Luck, yeah. Lucky me. Yeah. yeah see, <laughs> way it, like Philly is like fast paced. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas over there in Tampa and uh, you know Orlando, it's more slow and there's just a ton of traffic. Whereas here, it's like you jump on 95, you get killed with traffic, but everything's right here. You yeah, know, I Boca, agree. Waterdale, I agree. Miami. Yeah, yeah. You know. Well, it's funny. So when I when I left Philly and went down to Orlando, I was not that I was really into like high volume bars clubs like that really wasn't my scene to some degree but you always had that in your back pocket if you wanted to you know yardley's a, a relatively quieter town but you know if you wanted to take uh, i mean it was 35 minutes north of the city it's right you know it's you know a quick drive yeah, there I, they, they called it something what was it called they, where they're, they're, you know like they call like kingston kingston yeah they called yardley something i forget what it was called oh, i for can't remember it's been so long ago. oh i've never heard anything but yardley yeah it was like like some like like college town type of thing oh okay like okay. That, it was just some name some I, name I all right yeah i mean i loved it it was it was great i mean i i grew up in you know you were you, you was a lot of farms at the time and now oh, it's yeah. it's up and coming and it's it's definitely a different spot but when you go from there and then you move down to orlando you know it was it what i loved about orlando a i'm, I'm a disney kid at heart so i love going to the parks and all of that I still go with my family uh but it had such a heartbeat there was just like a vibration within the city limits there was so much to do great food great wine great places to go you know even if you were outside of that that circle of Disney, there was just so much going on. And then I remember then I left Orlando and I moved to South Florida and I moved to Boca. And, uh, you know, it was one of those, like, you leave work at like nine ten because I was working at the Boca Resort, so you were you were leaving work 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night, and then you're driving out and it's like pitch black everywhere. And I was like, what, what, where do I live right now? There, there's, <laughs> there's no nightlife. There's nothing like, and I was living off of federal, you know, so I left the resort. I hit federal, went all the way down to my spot, which was maybe about 15 minutes away. And there was like nothing like there's a couple of small dive bars, but it's not, and I'm like, man, I just left Orlando where it is literally the, you can feel the vibration within the city limits. And then you come down here and you're like, what, what am I doing here? I mean, I used to sit like Friday, Saturday nights or whatever I had off and I would sit you know in my place like drink a bottle of wine because i was like hey i didn't know anybody when i moved down here yeah i knew uh, one dude uh who actually is my realtor uh a buddy of mine named mike corman and so i knew him when i first moved down here uh but i you know i was working so much so i didn't really go out too often i was just like man i i hate it here i was like six months i'm out and then i met a couple of good buddies of mine started going out started to like you know hit like a little bit of the bar scene restaurants it started to go out and started to enjoy it and uh and then now it's all four years later that i remember six months in i was like get me out of boca raton florida there's nothing going on and uh and then i started to go out and enjoy del rey i don't go down to lottie too much just because it's you drink you yeah, drive right. it's dangerous i try not to go down there my office is down there but it's just it's i mean it's like a 45 minute hike to las olas but it's it's a good scene down there yeah i, I don't really like it either yeah. i don't like i like it here yeah like yeah. like clematis is not love clematis yeah love west Block. easy to get in and out you know mm -hmm. what i mean because when i moved down i was looking at uh palm beach gardens this area here or boca and yeah i i thought boca other than the mall was kind of too dead for me. Del Rey was too much bullshit. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, I ended up initially in Palm Beach Gardens, Got it. then Jupiter, and now right down by here. Got it. I like it right here because yeah. right in the middle. You yeah, know, yeah. if I want to go to Boca or Miami, it's that way. Yep, yep. If I want to go to Gardens, Jupiter, it's that way. I'm yep. like West Palm, 10 minutes down the road. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's I, I'm upset with myself because I don't go Jupiter enough. You know, a good buddy of mine works up there now, but I don't go up there too often. You know, I just feel like it's kind of desolate and I don't, you know, I don't know what what's going on up there, but it, I, I mean, it's like it's, up and coming, right? I mean, I love the golf, so I would definitely go play golf up there. But I mean, I love West Palm. West Palm's a great scene. Palm Beach Gardens, totally. Like, I, if I could, I would move up this direction, and then you still have like, you know, Del Rey, fifteen twenty minute yeah. shot away, and that's. But I love. I live currently in Del Rey. Uh, you know, I got a townhouse over there, so it's a great spot. I'm five minutes away from. 
uh, off Atlantic Avenue. So if I go over there, get yeah, a bite Atlantic to eat. Atlantic Avenue is yeah. popular. And it's great. You know, like, there are a lot of restaurants, bars. I was just there with my parents uh, just uh, yesterday afternoon So um, when they were down visiting. So, I mean, there's a lot going on down there, and I like it. It's not too crazy. It's not. But, I mean, ideally, at some point down the road, I would like to maybe get back in that Orlando down. neck of the woods. Oh, really? Orlando? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, Fuck I, that, man. You know, well, a couple reasons, and, and, you know, we'll spit it at some point. But, like, I, I really... A, my folks, which is, you know, super important to me, you know, they're building a home in Orlando and I've been gone from them for eight years, Yeah, you know, so now, so they're going to do that whole hybrid thing where they're living here for probably seven months and then back and they're going to stay at their snowbird type of thing. Yeah, because, so they sold the house in Yardley that I grew up in, which was really hard for me because it was, I mean, I was like five years old when I moved in and moved out at, you know, 30, I think it was. So it was hard for me to say goodbye to it, but it was just something that they It was a huge home. It was just the two of them. So they, they sold it. So now they're building a brand new home on a golf course in Orlando, which I'm super wow. stoked about, right? And uh, so they still got the Jersey spot. So they'll go back and forth. But I was just like, you know what? Like, I, I, if I can, you now granted, living here, it's only a two and a half hour drive. I can get to see him more Stop often. Bitch, though. It, it, it is, and it sucks because there's like nothing to look at. Once you get past like Jupiter and oh, you hop God. on the turn, or if you stay on 95, it is just like a ghost town. <laughs> yeah. And it's just brutal. But I mean, it's not the, I mean, in the Sunrail. I don't know, sometime in the near future supposed to open up and it's supposed to just be like a West Palm straight to Orlando shot, maybe like an that, hour oh. and 45 minute train ride, boom. Hi, yeah. That fucking thing scares me. When that thing Does moves. It? Oh, yeah, yeah. You ever take it to go down I to Miami? I would, but I yeah. haven't. But I've when, done I, it when I see that, fu- you see that, Dan, that fucking thing fly by, that bitch is fast. It's like 80. You're talking about the the fun train or? or- uh, the sun rail, I think it's called technically, but it might be called some, you know, other, but it, it does move. When you're on that thing, you're like, woo. Like when you go to like the railroad tracks, I mean, yeah, it yeah. is zooming. Yeah. I mean, that's got to be going what one twenty maybe. No, so the one here goes like eighty, but the ones you're talking about, uh, and maybe the one that they build from here to Orlando might be that. But if you go to Europe and you do those, those like speed, those bullets, yeah, they do like one twenty. Yeah, they're shaped like a bullet. Yeah, right? they're just yeah. You're, you're shooting through like wherever across Europe, and you're doing them like a couple hours, where yeah. it would take you like nine if you drove. But they're they're supposed to be building a sunrail from. Uh, somewhere down here all the way to Orlando. So that would you could just pay whatever, hop on the train, and you're up. The only thing with that is then you got to rent a fucking car. Yeah, I mean. Else. So it's almost worth it just to fucking. Depends, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but depending I mean, on what the situation Yeah, for sure, for sure. But, you know, if your family's out there, and the one thing I will say about out there is you, for the price, it's half out there what it is here. Dude, so I mean, you get murdered out here, but yeah, there's a yeah. lot here. Yeah, 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 for sure. There's some shit out there, but you're not gonna you you're gonna get double oh, out yeah, there yeah, what yeah. you'll get here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, you got a lot more shit here, and for your business, which we're gonna get into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if Orlando. I, I do marketing like no, but I I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah, for my business wise, it's so much better to stay in South yeah. Florida. There's no doubt. Um, you know, from from that perspective, living in South Florida, it's definitely a better niche for me than Orlando. And that'll you know I'll figure out whatever that'll come with time. I'm not itching to get up there anytime soon, but definitely business wise, it's better. Um, but I mean, more bang for your buck originally. Um, when I first moved to Orlando, I had an apartment for like mm, a year and then I bought a home. Right. And, you know, I bought that. Uh, it was like maybe high twos, two ninety and change. Right. Two story, <laughs> decent yard. Like right. Finding that here. Right. Four <laughs> bedrooms, two and a half baths. You put that same house here. It's probably like eight, nine. Oh, yeah. You know, sure. I mean, my parents are building a brand new house on a golf course outside of like in the celebration area in Orlando and I think they're building I think at the end of the day it's going to be like seven but I mean they got like state-of-the-art everything you put that monster here it'd have been like 1.3 1.4 More than that. I mean it's I mean they have they're, they're doing every like they are sparing no expense like, ready for this going, one my dad is a jerk off and he can go fuck himself but he's <laughs> in Lakeland right okay yeah on yeah. a golf course killer house mm-hmm. gated like you know on the golf course 350. Oh, jeez. Here, what, 3 million? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 4 million? Something like that. At minimum, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now you finish high school, yeah. right? Yeah. And now, did you want to be in the hospitality and food and, and beverage business the whole time? You know, it's funny. So, uh, yes and no. I mean, during that adolescence, it's kind of, you, you know, you're in that part of your life where you don't really know what you want to do. But man, I was working in restaurants and bars, uh, you know, like most people through college and things of that nature and didn't really know what your niche was. You know, my family, my, my 
grandparents had. They owned a hotel up in uh, in Philly outside of it. So it was a little bit in my blood to some degree. I mean, I, I use that excuse, but I don't, you know, I think it was, you know. Uh, so, but I fell in love with hospitality and taking care of people and being able to, to learn, educate myself, and just had such a passion for it. But I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And then I did that college internship for Walt Disney World, right? And I did that for like eight months. And when I got back, I was like, this is it. Like, I love it. Even though the internship for Disney isn't cut for everybody, but it was one of those like really cool experiences where I was like, I love it. And I love Orlando. I love Florida, you know, the whole nine yards and hospitality all the way through. So then you, then you get trapped in it. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you don't know how to get out of it. Next thing you know, you're trying to figure it out and you're like, what do I know how to do? Right. And you're, you know, you're climbing the corporate ladder and you're like, man, food and beverages, it's brutal because it demands so much of you and your time, right? So it takes away, I mean, every holiday, think about it, every Christmas, every Mother's Day, every Easter, every every birthday of my niece or my nephew, I couldn't make. Every Sunday, I couldn't go to the family cookouts or pasta with the family. I couldn't do it because I was always working, right? And then that, that takes a toll on you, but you're always like, but you know what? I'm climbing it. I'm doing the corporate thing. I'm hustling. I'm doing it. I'm, I'm in my 20s. Let me do a while. You justify. Right. You justify 100%. everything. So what? The Orlando job, was that your first experience actually working in the hospitality business? No, no. So I went, um, I got my first opportunity in Trenton, New Jersey to be a supervisor at a Marriott, right? Right, So I did that for like 10 months, 11 months. And then I left there and I went to a Hyatt Regency in Princeton, New Jersey, right right off of uh, Route 1. Mm -hmm. So I worked there for... Uh, maybe a little over a year and change and then that hotel flipped from a Hyatt and it became like a franchise Hyatt and I wanted out so then I went over and I transferred to the Hyatt at the Bellevue in Center City Philadelphia all restaurant managers so these are all management positions. this is all prior to Orlando this is all prior to Orlando okay. so yeah so I'm in Philly so I went from uh, Trent New Jersey then I went to uh, Princeton New Jersey then I went to the Hyatt uh, in Philly off of Broad Street the the Bellevue yeah. gorgeous property I looked at your thing man yeah. you bounced around a lot bro. yeah so and, and I probably could have done more in hospitality you know if I you know if it was a little bit different I, I mean hospitality one of the luxuries you can transfer bounce around go to state to state to state and the only the other downside to it but a plus side is that the more you bounce around the more experience you get the more money you get you know it's it's not one of those industries where the longer the longevity you stay in one right. property I was just gonna ask you that because a lot of them I saw it was like 14 to 16 and then you're at the Walt Wal- or you know yeah. it could be yeah, different yeah. and then yeah. you know like 15 to 16 you're at the Lowe's or yep or, yep, or yep, whatever. yep yep and then 16 to 17 you're at the Waldorf and then uh, you were somewhere at Locos or Lacos, which was, I guess, part of Waldorf. So I can never say that. The Waldorf, yeah. So it was Luco. So so basically, a little bit of like a quick synopsis of it. So I went from Princeton, New Jersey, or sorry, so Trenton to Princeton to Philly, and then I transferred from Philly to the Orlando property, the Hyatt at the airport, uh, the International Airport. So I was there. I did two different spots there. I was a banquet manager there, and then I was a restaurant manager there. I left there, and then I opened up. Uh, one of the the three meal restaurant in Lowe's Hotel, so it was a an amazing opportunity. So you're open up from from the ground up. I mean, hard hats, the whole nine yards. You're you're picking silverware. You're picking your staff. Like it is from the ground up. You were part of an operation. It's a 395 seat restaurant. So it was a monster. I was a GM of it. Picked my whole crew. You know, three meals, so breakfast, lunch, dinner, there all the time. So I opened that, but it was the the experience, the people I met, the friend. I still have some of my best friends in the world were from that opening and that experience. Yeah. I'll never, that was one of the most pinnacle moments of my life. And then I needed to get out of Orlando. And uh, I was thinking about getting back to Philly. You know, I was going through some personal issues. I was thinking about going back to Philly, didn't know where I wanted to go. And then the the Waldorf hit me up and uh, was like, hey, you know, would you be interested in coming down this direction? So I interviewed and I came down and I, I was like, I'm, uh, I'm in. Sign me in. I needed to get out of Orlando. Let's go down. And uh, so I, I moved down to, to Boca Raton. And then I was the GM of Luca, which is their like flagship restaurant at the, at the mm-hmm. hotel at the Waldorf. And uh, so I was there. I did that for like a little over a year. And then I got promoted to the assistant director of food and beverage at the resort which I did that for like two and a half years and give or, you know, give or take. And then, uh, you know, during that whole COVID moment, and that's where kind of when I had that little bit of an epiphany where I was just like, you know, um, is, is this, 
you know, I had this thought some years ago about getting out of food and beverage, but you were, you know, people that were in hospitality, I think, were so nervous to try something different. They were so afraid of getting out. They were kind of trapped in it. They didn't, they didn't know what other out, you know, like what are you going to do? Sort, right. Yeah. You know, you think about it, you're like, well, what else am I good at? Where can I go now? Where can I make what I'm making now with a better quality of life? And then uh, a good buddy of mine, you know, which we'll, we'll chop it up too, is that, uh, you know, he worked for Five Star Claims, which is, you know, and a public adjuster. And I'm watching, you know, I'm, I'm on his Instagram and I'm, you know, I see this guy's courtside Lakers game. He's in Tulum. He's all over the map. I'm like, what are you doing? Meanwhile, you're working 30 Dude, fucking hours a day. There's only yeah. 24. Well, you know, and I got out of hospitality back and right after Easter and I bounced around for a couple sales gigs. I was doing, I was the director of business development for a software company that uh, worked with hospitality. And I was sitting at a desk, you know, eight, nine hours of a day. You know, just like the yep, open. Yeah, this is not, I can't do well, it. Well, you're going from one extreme to another. Total, right. And, and see, my grandparents had a hotel mm -hmm. and a restaurant, and they were there 24 7. Mm -hmm. Now, they were from Italy, so it didn't bother them. That, that's just what it's they different. knew. It's different. Yeah. You know what I mean? But they, they were there, I mean, hot, like you said. Because now imagine the restaurant on top of a motel. Oh, sure. And it was, you know, up in Pennsylvania. It's right off uh, uh, 76. So oh, you, yeah, you yeah. take the God, Lebanon Lancaster exit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the worst and road they, in the world. They had all the deals with all the construction people. Mm -hmm. So you would come right off the turnpike, maybe a mile, yep. right there where my grandparents nice, hotel, nice. Italian restaurant, and then yeah. a post office and shit. And they worked so much because I, I can relate to what you were saying. Like, you, you know, you gave up so much of your family and you know, events and dinners and, you know, and important Sunday it. dinners is and shit. All of it. And they never, they were, they, well, my grandmother came because she cooked, but my grandfather, he, one of them had to be there. Mm -hmm. And it got so crazy that he actually built a house on the back of the hotel. So there's the hotel that would go like on a strip, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like different rooms. And then you would walk in and be the restaurant. And then there's the restaurant and like a back area to play, you know, poker or whatever. Mm. And then behind that, because they're there all the time, he ended up building a fucking house attached to the back of it, like a, an extension. Oh, no shit. Yeah, and yeah. my grandmother and my grandfather were together all the time working at the fucking hotel. She couldn't get the, the fuck. She couldn't wait to leave. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So she ended up coming home with us, with me and my mom, just yeah. to give, get a break from him. <laughs> and he loved it because he could light up his cigarettes. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. didn't like that he smoked. Yeah, yeah. So that's the both worlds. Yeah, so like I'd hang out with him once in a while and have a drink. And the second she leave, there came them marble reds, yeah. bro. <laughs> like Joey, yeah, one yeah, after yeah. another. Yeah, after yeah another, just after running after through them. Vodka, uh, yeah. you know. But I mean, it, it took up their whole life. I yeah. Mean, I never seen them go on vacation. I it never. Was tough. I mean, they would. They would close down like uh, like maybe like two to four, mm -hmm. and they they would go together and have lunch every day. Sure, you know, yeah. but be right back. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's a tough industry, especially when you. I mean, when you own your own and, and that's that's your livelihood, and that's. I mean, you are, you're there all the time. You know, at least when you're in a big box hotel, major company, they have other resources. So yeah, you're there a lot, but it's not as bad as like your family run where you're seven days a week. You know. I would typically get two days off, but there's plenty of times I wouldn't. You know, when I worked at the Boca Resort, I mean, it was, you go from like December 20th through January 2nd, January 3rd, and you would get one day off. And you were working 14, 15 hour days. I mean, all of us. I mean, it wasn't just like, it was, it was just brutal because there's so much demand. You know, you have members, they have expectations. The volume is just through the roof because it's seasoned. So that's, that's when they're making their prime dollars. And I get it. It just, was like, man, I mean, what would make you want to get in that fucking business? bro? It's tough. Man, you know, it's, it's, you know, what for me, it's, I love, I love leading people. I love being a part of that, that network, that family that's, you know, you, you know, it, it may be weird that you're not spending family with your family, but then you're spending it with other people who are spending it with you too at the same time. So they're not with their loved ones, but they're with you. So you, you build that. Like, I get it. Yeah. You know, there's this, and you're there for each other, you know, and that's, and that type of unity was important. You know, for me, especially when my whole family is still in Philly, right? So Philly and Jersey. So for me, I, I couldn't, you know, there was no Thanksgiving dinners or Christmas. To, I mean, I could now granted, you know, what I do now, I can run and take a flight and do that. But even if 
you know, even if I was off and I was local, I couldn't, you know, no one was down here. So I was like, you know what, I'm, just, I'm I'll work, right? And uh, so the resort was tough here in Boca because it was, you know, seasonal. When I lived in Orlando, you could you could try to get at least one of those major holidays off. You know, there was enough staff; it wasn't as busy during yeah, the holidays down here. Not down here. I mean, it's 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 balls to the wall. I mean, it's packed. I mean, you're doing crazy numbers, crazy revenue all the time, expectations through the roof. You know, and you're you're constantly pushing yourself to the limits, and it's one of those you challenge challenge yourself too like can I do this you know you wake up and you're like can I can I you know you're getting up and you're just banging out a 14 and how many hours a night were you getting to sleep like when you were working like I don't which which was the out of all the places you've been at you know the, the mm-hmm. Marriott the fucking yeah, Boca yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all I mean there's what five or six that you've been at yeah, yeah, yeah which was the most demanding I would say the lows was uh yeah, I because I opened that. it oh, right so if I didn't open that resort uh, yeah. Probably not, but I mean, it was it was challenging when you open something from the from from the jump, oh, yeah. right? So you got tons of things that go wrong. I mean, I have horror stories where staff would ring in food in the restaurant, it gets fired out to like the the pool operation, right? And then the kitchen and the pool is getting the check. Meanwhile, the restaurant's like a mile away, and you don't even know how it's happening. So when you have that happen, how do you handle that situation as a manager to keep everything under control? It, because you not only have to deal with the fuck up. Up, right, mm-hmm. you you still got however many other guests that yeah, use yeah, your yeah. attention. Yeah, it's it's tough. You, I mean, look at the core of it. It's just it's it's being empathetic, right? So like people talk about that. Room. <laughs> no, no. So I mean, that's always easy. You know, it's it's always the easy route just to start throwing out free stuff at people. But a lot of people don't want free things. They just they want to be heard, right? So you just you you put yourself in their position. Can you introduce me to some of them people? Yeah, because I don't know anybody yeah. that, that, that just wants to be heard. Doesn't want something. Yeah, no. I mean, you'd be amazed. Sometimes and sometimes it's just a small meeting for gestures. That, that go a long time you know it's throwing up maybe a bottle of wine to their room a little yeah. bit later it's not trying to get them a whole fr- sometimes i mean you got to adjust it. you got to read the situation so sometimes just it's being heard some of those i mean a lot of them when we open up that hotel they understood they were just like man this is rough i mean when you go to and it doesn't matter if you go to a restaurant that opens up next week down the street it's going to be rough as a, as a guest well, there's right? going to be a hundred problems yeah just, it's going like to be rough when i built this studio yeah you, you don't understand yeah. what this looked like nine months yeah ago. <laughs> it was a glass table and two chairs yeah right i, yeah. I would assume it was right? all fucked up yeah, it's I mean? it's tough. So I mean, yeah. so you do have guests that that understand that that uh, are you know kind about it. As long as trying to apply empathy and letting them know that you understand what it's like to be in their position, right? And then once they feel that you understand, instead of just being like, "I'm sorry," here's this. You just sound like you're just like brushing them. If you actually listen to them and, and apply that, be like, "I I can understand your frustration. I know what it must. I, I know what it feels like. I've had a similar situation where I was in a rush." As long as you apply that you've been in a similar situation, then they can relate to you. Then they feel like you're on their level. Sometimes doesn't always work that way. Some people are just like they're riding you for. They want the, the, their goal is to get something for free and, and people will win that and then you're in a position where y- you have to give it to them free because especially when you open anything because if you don't Man. and word gets out that you didn't take care of yeah. them you might as well, you might as well just quit and I, run. I couldn't tell you that lowe's hotel and i don't remember the numbers off the top of my head but i remember when we first opened up we were so far in the red with things given away i mean not even from food and beverage side but the hotel just the amount of free things we i mean it was just it was brutal and imagine the fucking rent that they were paying oh i can't even imagine i mean what do you think it was oh out of curiosity couldn't even i I could throw a number on a wall and it probably wouldn't even be right i wouldn't even know i know you you know king of prussia yeah and and those listening king of prussia is in philadelphia it's it's like right off the street KOP. it's like right yeah Yeah. KOP. it's like right in the middle of what like south philly and basically the turnpike yeah 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 i mean i would always take the turnpike all the way off and get off uh the King of Prussia exit. Yeah, so a uh, 500 square foot, the, there was a GNC in there, and I knew the guy. Mm-hmm. It was 80000 a month. Do you remember the GNC? Holy it was a little spot. It was maybe. Was it in the big mall or the second mall? It was in the big mall. The big mall. On the second floor. Okay. Upstairs. Got it. Anyway, I mean, it was a tiny place. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe at best, because they had a back, at best, 500 square feet, at best. They must be pumping a lot of protein out of there. Yeah, dude. right. Or to pumping something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Five, dude, 80,000. And that was in 2000, uh, oh, jeez, 2003, yeah. four. That's what they were paying. I heard that mall eighty thousand. I heard that mall got a major facelift, and it's like stunning. Like I mean, it was always gorgeous. Yeah, but I heard it's like I haven't been there. In a, in a I while. haven't been there. But the same people that own that own the mall, own Boca Mall and Palm Beach Gardens. Oh, do they? It's Simon. 
Oh, and, okay. And, uh, whatever. I wouldn't even have known that. They own uh, Aventura. Oh, okay. They own all, all the all high those, end shit those, with yeah, like yeah, Gucci yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know they they got them all. Yeah, that I mean, fucker's it, making a killer. You go to that mall, it's like an. I mean, we would we Google literally probably owns a fucking shit. Probably, probably an umbrella. Yeah, I mean, we would make a day of it though. Yeah. It was like we're going to the King of Prussia. We would plan that, be like, all right, Tuesday, going to the King of Prussia mall. Get there at nine. You you walk out of there like you left Epcot. Yeah, don't take like a girl you're there. Or you're gonna be fucking. No, broke. you're done. Yeah, yeah you're done for. You're done for. But if you want to fuck him, maybe take. Yeah, maybe you got a better shot. Yeah, that's true. Like, oh, he takes me. Odds, odds go up. Yeah. <laughs> he brought me to Gucci. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so you do that. Yeah. And you're w- working a gazillion hours with sleeping four hours a night, I would guess. Um, Dude, when I worked at Lowe's, man, that, sh- <laughs> that shit was crazy. So I would go in and I would be the opening manager. So I would open up that spot and I would get there at six in the morning. And then I would, now to my demise, I would stay longer than I probably should have, but it was one of those. I was very proud of it. It was my baby. I can like I put it all together, like me and the team. So it's not just me, but it was a lot of. It was my baby. Like I, I put every. I thought of every process, every standard operating procedure through that thing. So I wanted to be there through it. So I wanted to. Be, I was there through breakfast, there through lunch, and I would be there through dinner, and I would leave at like nine, right? So I get there six to nine, and then I would go out and and party a little bit, go out, drink, you know, hang out with friends, you know, you're out at nine o'clock, meet up a couple buddies, whatever it might be, go out, pop in two o'clock in the morning, you know, put your head down. <laughs> And next thing you know, you are waking up at 5.30 in the morning, to, or not even 5.35, shower, get back to the resort at 6. And it was rough. I mean, it was it was because it was, you know, I, I was I was new into that, into that world, and I was meeting new people, and you were constantly, like, just networking, meeting new friends, so you were constantly going out and things of that nature. And um, so I would go out and have a good time and then try to bounce back and be there at six o'clock in the morning. And it was, it was, I don't even know how I did it. Cause now if I have a bottle of wine, I'm out for like three days. I was reading everything about you, you know, at the last minute. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Yeah. You're welcome. I, I've yeah. only been yeah. asking you for two weeks. Yeah. Well, that's uh, procrastination. I, uh, yeah. Funny. What else is new? So, uh, and when I did, I was like, man, I don't know how this fucking guy hasn't had a heart attack. Yeah. So it is because it, you we were talking before you have a heart issue. Yeah. So I have a heart condition. Uh, so man, it, it's it's changed its flavor every time. Uh, <laughs> as in, so when I was younger and I found out about I had a heart murmur, and then it okay. be, became a mitral valve prolapse when I was in high school, or somewhere in that window, and then just recently, uh, and I forget what he diagnosed me with. Uh, I was here. I went to go see a doc because every couple of years I got to go see him. He said he he doesn't believe I have uh, mitral valve prolapse. So basically, when blood gets pumped from one chamber of the heart to the other, mm-hmm. your valve doesn't close all the way. Right. So he said he doesn't think I have that. He thinks I have something different, and I can't think of it right now. So like I said, it changes a couple different times. So I don't. Uh, I'm not one to. You know, you offer me one of those energy drinks. I try not to. Coffee is like the extreme for me. Uh, I've never been someone who dabbled in any type of like extracurricular. I drink alcohol from you know and hung out and yeah. drank wine, but I never I never partied like that. Drugs, yeah. No, I never did it. It's never it was never part of my scene. No, I just drink uh, a little marijuana once. Yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. With the card. No, I mean it's it's funny because to sleep. I needed to sleep. I yeah, sleep. Well, you know what's crazy about it too is that when I moved from uh, when I, when I lived in Philly, either I was super naive or I just wasn't a part of that group where people. Yeah, people, friends, smoke weed, whatever, no problem. But like Coke or things, I I never saw that in in my circle. I moved to Orlando, never saw that in my circle. I moved down here and it was like, (laughs) I'll never forget. So one of my best, fondest moments of it is I'm in O'Brien's right across from the resort, right? And it's like a dive Irish bar. We would all go there when we get done work. And I'm sitting there and and I go to the bathroom. And they, you know, a guy walks in behind me who I know. And uh, he shuts the door behind me and he locks it. And I'm at the urinal and I'm like, not good. Right. And I was like, (laughs) what's up? And he's like, hey, Rye, he's like, you don't mind if I do a key bump, do you? I'm naive. And I'm a grown ass man. What's a key bump? Oh, so you're that's even better. The fact that Tommy, you don't even know what that I, is. Because I, I didn't know what it is. So a key bump is like where you get coke and you get the the, the key. Like a spoon? And, yeah, and you like oh. a key bump, right? So no, and I'm like, 
I'm like, sure, no idea what he's talking about, right? So I turn around and now he's just banging out these, like he's got a little, and he's doing, and I'm super uncomfortable. Like I'm in, like my back's up against the wall in the dirty O'Brien's bar bathroom. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I'm, oh my God, get me out of here. Right. So, I mean, I just, I've never been around it. You know what I mean? Like it was never really a thing for me. I think a lot of it had to do with my heart. I just didn't want to, I didn't want to mess with anything that would I just, it's your ticker, man. It's different than it's like. You got a bad back or something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I, I never fucked with it. I, when I was 18, I saw a girl, no, 17. I, she took an ecstasy pill and it was late. We were at a party, fucking drop dead right yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that fucked no, me up. No. And then I was in South Philly with a bunch of guys where, you know, you just not, it wouldn't go over well. Yeah. And you know what? The funny thing was, I was around a guy every single day that was doing a lot of coke and I didn't know it. No, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The only thing, looking back, the only thing I noticed was over time I saw like purplish under his eyes. Oh, okay. But I just thought he was tired because we were running around all the time. All the time. But I, but like physically, I or physically, emotionally, or the way he acted, I had Never absolutely no idea. No. Yeah, the and only it ended up turning into a real nightmare. I'm sure. This the only guy time really fucked things up, but yeah. Uh, the only time I've ever noticed it on someone that I I didn't know in the moment, but I learned after was either like their weight right super thin very like energetic all over the place or like very twitchy i would see yeah. them like and then someone would be like hey he's and I'm like, oh no i mean that's that's just me being naive the, i just the, wasn't around see it. this guy there was no there was no difference from him when i had met him five years prior and i knew he was completely clean you know what i mean to same on, cat all the way through same cat all the way through the only thing i could tell was looking back was just you know the like look tired right 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 but not anything which is else. weird because you that that's supposed to do the opposite i, I think he was doing so much of it and it then actually, not sleeping uh, it, it was yeah, yeah, it was yeah, keeping yeah. he was probably up for but he sure, still was sure. on point he yeah, wasn't yeah. you know off and yeah. uh you know it, it was it's a fucking crazy time with that shit yeah you know? i mean i don't even i don't even like taking advil right like yeah. i i don't even like it's it's rare for me like i did last night because i jacked up my shoulder but i don't i don't even take like ibuprofen maybe yeah. like I, if i wake up the next day with a headache i'm nope like i don't i'd rather fight through it. i don't i do not like putting extracurricular things in my system that i don't i can't control no alcohol is the only thing that i allow i mean i drink vodka waters or you know wine huge wine guy love that uh bourbon love bourbon things of that nature or seltzer on the golf course things of that nature so nothing nothing too great i mean it's nowadays like i was mentioning before if i drink and have a little bit too much i am out of commission for like two days well, especially well, you're red talking wine. wine i mean Dude, the, red wine because it dehydrates okay. well and it dehydrates yeah. you right so it just sucks everything yeah. so if you can that's a, if i drink vodka water like i'm doing now it, it's easier because you're you're, you're constantly hydrating, staying hydrated yeah, right so the next day is not terrible red wine kill you Bye bye. Like right. yeah, I you you can't. Gotta, I can't even talk to you. Yeah. Like it, I can't it, function. And can't wait, think. and it's a guaranteed headache. No, oh, it's what. the worst. Ibuprofen's okay if your stomach is okay. Mm -hmm. Tylenol is is worse than a, a handle of fucking vodka. It's yeah. Really bad. Yeah. Tylenol is really really bad. A leaves terrible. Uh, ibuprofen's probably the best one if you don't have any like ulcers. Right, right, right. It's pretty good. I'll take it from time to time. <clears throat> yeah. Before the gym, go for a run. I no. just take my Modafinil prescribed. Mm. My Klonopin to stay calm, prescribed, and that's really and yeah. a ton of caffeine. Yeah, you got, <laughs> and that's that's the remedy and, right there. Yeah, and you know I've been taking these uh, these like gummies, man. These like chewable man's. Uh, I've gotten to a oh, point yeah, where yeah, my in my it. life where now I find these gummies and I'm like I'm like man I'm my father right I'm chewing fucking vitamin gummies that have everything in it just to stay and I mean I try to eat relatively good but you know you're just you're older it's just. It takes a toll. It does. Yeah, fi you Life can't changes. be father time, right? No, it's it's brutal, and I never thought it was it was going to catch up on me. And then the gray hair and everything else came into effect. I haven't I like, really felt it yet. Yeah, I, I haven't felt it yet. No, I I feel the same way now as I do at eighteen. No, oh, God bless. I, I feel. Uh, the only thing now is because you know I don't get myself in any trouble, mm -hmm. and it's just it's like constant pull, like yeah, pull yeah. everywhere, like yeah. you know, and and you try to do things and. It's just it's tough. It's it's tough running multiple businesses and then depending on people. It's just a fucking. It's different. It's a, yeah, it's a I mean thing. that's the same thing. I mean hospitality that it just it it ran you man. It ran. I mean it was it was brutal. Like Lowe's was Lowe's by far. Like when you asked me originally, Lowe's was was just was on another level of an animal of just being committed. Now, granted, I was 
I did it to myself to some Lowe's degree. Is a big time hotel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially uh, Universal. Not, you know, that's uh, like a rest. That's up there with like uh, Ritz Carlton. Well, no. You, so Waldorf, the Boca is yeah. on that level. Lowe's isn't on that level, but it's. I it's, thought it was though. I want no, nah, no. Nah, so the Waldorf is. So <laughs> Waldorf is so Hilton. Their top tier hotel brand is the Waldorf, right? So like Marriott's got JW and Ritz, right? Those are their two premier. So Marriott owns Ritz. Marriott owns Ritz, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So and then you like if you think of Hyatt, right? You have um, you have Park Hyatt, right? Or Andaz. Those are their top like tier hotel brands. Um, it, so Lowe's is kind of like doesn't have. I mean, they don't. They do and they don't have different hierarchies of like where they're at, but they're they're not like. Ryan, you know where it was? I was in California to a Lakers game, uh-huh. and the Lowe's there in Cali, yeah. right by the Staples Center. Okay, that is a bomb. Yeah, no, no. There's, I mean, yeah. there's the 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 one in, uh, um, I'm drawing a blank of it in California right now. But yeah, I mean, there's Lowe's that are LA. gorgeous in LA. Okay, yeah, yeah, I think they. I mean, they probably have a. They have probably have multiple. There's some that are gorgeous. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. They just don't have like the hierarchy of tiers. Yeah, where you go from like uber luxury mid-grade like Hyatt does where you can go or Hilton where you go Waldorf and then you can just stay at a high like a or a Hilton like mid-tier and then you could stay at one of like the the small little you know uh, Hilton what are those like or Hyatt places one of those small little ones so they have these different brackets Hilton or Lowe's is kind of one across because the you were in you were in the industry if you're ever bored which you're probably busy as fuck if you look up the Lowe's um, by the Palm Steakhouse in LA like literally right down Dope. from the Staples Center. Yeah, it's like eight a night. Oh yeah, yeah for yeah. a shitty room. Oh, I'm sure. And, and I'm the sure. best one is like three. K. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's killer. Yeah, yeah. It's killer. I mean, but Lowe's. Don't get me wrong. It's it like the a... Breakers over there. Yeah, but yeah. not here. I understand yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, I love the Lowe's. It was. I, you know what I do like out of all of them? I actually like the Marriott a lot. No, I love Marriott. I mean, that's. I was in Marriott when I was younger. That was my first opportunity with Marriott, and I would love to have gotten back with it at some point. I'll be honest with you, though. My favorite across the board out of all of them. So I've. I've done Disney, Marriott, Lowe's, Hyatt, Hilton, right? So those five major brands. Hyatt by far was my favorite. What's right? your favorite hotel, Dan? Out, out of the ones he said, which one do you like? I'm assuming Ramada Inn's not on this list. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to go well, Marriott. I'd have to go Marriott. Marriott, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would you say, Ramada? Ramada. I don't even know what flag that follows under anymore. Cockroach? Ramada. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I have I have some fond memories of uh, uh, Ramadas, man. Bender, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Bender, I well, guess. Yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> Hide out. <laughs> I mean, I've I've known Ramadas that have gotten torn down because of just like bug infestations and just not being taken care of, especially outside of Philly. You know, I used, I was gonna work for Crown Plaza at one point. Crown Plaza's nice. Right, Crowns are not. I was gonna work for the uh, Omnis are are gorgeous. Never right, never heard of so Omnis are in like major metropolitan cities. Right, really swanky. It's like you know you're gonna find. There's one in Orlando. That's probably the closest. One. I'm sure there's one in, in Miami. Now that I think about it, I'm, I'm sure there is. It's gorgeous. There's not a ton of them. You know, it's super swanky. It's stunning. Love Omnis. You know, there's a, there's so many amazing hotel brands out there. But, I mean, I, I kind of got caught up in that whole, you know, the, especially like the big box ones, right? The, the, the Hiltons, the Marriott's, the Hyatt's, those big ones because they're international. That's one of the luxuries of when you work for – an international, or excuse me, when you work for a hospitality company, not many benefits. One of them, your travel perks, right? Mm-hmm. I've been to Europe and didn't, when I worked for Hyatt, you would get 12 comp nights a year, right? It's not as easy as I say it's going to be, but for just for conversation, I'll make it seem like it's very easy. But I mean, I went to Europe. I went to, I went to Germany. I went to um, uh, Paris, France. I went to Cannes in the south of France. And then I went to London, England, right? So th- I can stay in one particular hotel for three nights for free. Can say so I bounced around all three, and I didn't pay one. It was comp, right? So I left that entire European vacation and only paid for food, beverage, and like excursion shit. They paid the flight too. No, and I paid the flight, yeah. but the hotel rooms I didn't pay when I were for for Hyatt. Right, and that's one of the benefits. And then when you sit in one of the restaurants, if you eat there, you get like fifty percent off. Oh, so there's wow. benefits of that. And then being in the industry, like when I go to Napa, I never pay for anything. 
Really? You know, no, I don't pay for anything. But I mean, now I'll probably have to because I'm out of the industry. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. you talk to your wine rep; they hook you up. I mean, I've been to I've been to Napa three times. I was just there. Well, now it's been two years since I was there in, in October. But what a blast! I mean, you go to these gorgeous vineyards, and I don't pay, and they give you the VIP tour because you're buying so much. Well, I'm not; the hotel is, but you're representing it. You buy so much inventory from them that they like hook you. And if you work in food, if you work in the industry, and you go on your own organically. And then you walk up to any of those those vineyards, you just drop your business card and your food and beverage, whatever, you get the tastings for free. And then they want you to go back to America and tell the Hyatt that you're working for, hey, it's great over here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, part of that stipulation, did they make you go to any type of class or anything like that? Because I know a lot of times hotels and other companies will do that so they can write off your trip. So they'll say like, okay, Ryan, yeah, here, yeah, yeah. go to London. Just show up for this bullshit seminar yeah, yeah, yeah. so we can write it. Yeah, yeah no, I, I haven't had the luxury of doing that. The closest thing I had to that is I went to, when I was working for the Hilton, I went to a uh, an Italian wine course. And it's it's they're trying to become more established than they are. This a couple of years ago. And I, I thought I knew Italian wine before I took this course. And I, you got this Paisan that's up there, right? And he's 100% Italian, comes right. I think he's... I don't know. I forget where he was from. If he was from, he might have been from Sardinia in Sicily. I don't remember where exactly he was from, but his English was so rough, mm -hmm. right? And everybody in the course that's sitting there, I'm there with three other of my fellow coworkers from the Hilton, and this guy's up there, and, he, and his English is so rough. And the people in the course are Italian, either they're they own their own family Italian restaurant, right? So they're I, I don't speak Italian. So they're they're talking to him and he's and he's answering questions in Italian and I'm, we're sitting back there just like drinking the wine. It's a three day course and I'm like, oh, my. Italian wine, by the way, is probably the, well, I don't know, maybe French, and, but it is is super difficult. Like I walked out of there and I felt like I knew what I was talking. I felt I walked out of there like full retard. Like I walked out of like what just. When, when you see an old Italian guy bring in like his own bottle, uh -huh. he stepped on those grapes with his feet. Oh, like, yeah, my yeah. great grandfather yeah, yeah, yeah. did that shit. Yeah. And that is like uh, moonshine. Mm. It's like moonshine wine. Pretty Absolutely. Much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, my family, my parents or my grandparents were born in Sicily. So I, I do love some Sardinian wine because that's North North Italy. Or I want to talk about a fucking headache. I don't, I, my co I don't know how they do it. They drink it every day. Yeah. I mean, once it becomes just a fabric of your like day to day rhythms, you just. Your body build, just. Right. It's, it's, it. it's probably like that. If I had yeah. one of those, I'd bounce off the wall yeah, like I, Richard Simmons. But yeah, you do it. I can like, drink one. I can go till eight and I'm all yeah, 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 my sleep. Yeah. yeah I, you know, seven, eight, I'm pushing. Yeah. You know what I mean? If I want to get to bed at any reasonable but I know I you're texting anyway. me at like 1 30 in the morning yep. and I'm like this Python's still up because, because you got to think like during the day I'm doing marketing yeah then I'm coming in here two time two three times a week yep. and this is you know by the time we're done and then everything's cleared up I get home 10 11 now I got to catch up on everything I missed for the five hours I was here because the marketing sure. is marketing is similar to a hotel like what you were doing with the food and beverage mm -hmm. and and all the hours as that it's a 24 hour all gig the time yep. because you know a site might go down a server might go down while i'm here maybe somebody i have a contract with is saying look i want to add 20 images to my site blah 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 you know and it's part of the contract you know i, I get it with lawyers and shit because i had done it you know i've been doing it like 20 years and in the beginning i would do it and then if their page wasn't on page one in three months it was a whole fucking issue, right? Well, there's no way for me to say, Ryan, I can get your page on page one in three months, but mm -hmm. I know I could do it in a year. So as I started to get established, then it was contract. You don't want a contract, go fuck yourself. Mm -hmm. I had a minimum, you don't want to pay it, go fuck yourself and have somebody that else that you go to buy Google ads and there's a hide button. So say you hire an SEO company, right? Mm -hmm. It's good, you know, search engine optimization yep. for uh, your uh claims adjusting thing mm -hmm. just for an example i would say seven out of ten companies you're going to pay them three four hundred bucks a month maybe five hundred they're going to promise you the world and then all they're doing is buying ads in your area and then they can hide you know when you google something you it will say ad yeah, yeah, yeah. you can hide that ad okay oh. so now they're taking you're paying say 600 they're taking half 300 and they're buying ads Okay, so now you're going to be on page one quick, but they'll slow play it. They'll act like they're working, and then three months later, all of a sudden, fuck, Ryan's on page one. 
But no, he they they took your six, six, six. So now they got eighteen hundred pocketed. We're working on it, and you'll see a little bit because they'll take like fifty bucks and add it to the ad, and then a hundred. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They slow play it, so you see results. But what you don't know is they're not doing shit. It's just an ad. And now in your mind, you say, you know what? This is a little bit over my budget. I can't do it anymore. Now they cut your ad. Now you're back on page fifty, oh, right? Geez. So now you feel like you need them. But what you don't know is they're not doing any backlinks or coding or anything like that that stays. They're just taking part of what you're paying mm -hmm. at a real, at a good price compared to like my price. Right, right, right. And they're just buying ads. <sighs> now, I'm not saying like once in a while I won't buy an ad for a new product that somebody I have a contract with. Yep. You yep. know, but I let them know, look, this is what I'm doing. But this is not like s sustainable. You know what I mean? You have to do backlinks and, and all this other shit. But that's what they do. So... I had gotten to the point where I was like, fuck this. This is the minimum. And, you know, at first people like would fall over. Like, you're crazy. I'm not paying it. No problem. Mm. Uh, you'll be back. Yeah, Trust yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, as my portfolio grew, they saw what I did in it many times. Uh, now nah, too high. Because then they would go with the jerk off that I told them what was going to happen. And the second they didn't pay, boom, yeah. it dropped. Yeah. When I do it, it sticks because it's manual. You Got know it. what I mean? So, but but it, it's a lot of pool because it's, you know, it's. You know, I have a client in the UK that I do. Nice. So their time's fucked up. Yeah. Philippines, their time's fucked up. That's a good point. You know, yeah. so it's a lot of pulling at once. Yeah, yeah. So now you were in this food and uh, beverage business for 20 years? Yeah. I How mean, old are you? I'm 38, man. 38 with a, f with a fucking heart condition on your way out? Yeah, I'm going to I'm going down at you 42, the, man. You'd be lucky to make it to 50. <laughs> God damn, you definitely I'm, picked the wrong answer. I'm, yeah. A fucking I, guy with a heart murmur decides to work 16 yeah, man. hours a day. And I'll tell you, it, it took- <laughs> it deal took, with assholes. It took 15 off my life, right? I so bet. I'm trying to play catch up and that's the whole goal now. I mean, I, I I thought about it a long time ago. I was like, how do I how do I change you know, my perspective on life? How do I you know, alter things, the day-to-day the -day rhythms of what you want to do and what you find? But I, you know, for me, for so long, it was just like- you were petrified of leaving the industry. And there's probably a lot of people that are similar that will probably watch this that are in still in hospitality that were, well, A, hospitality right now is in an all-time, like, culture shock. Like, they can't get, can't hire anybody. No one's going back into the industry. Places, I mean, if, if you're still working in it, God bless you and thank you for your help. And if you're going to restaurants and bars, thank those people that are there because, not many operations are still thriving because they can't get help, period. Like, I have friends of mine that po consistently post on either Instagram, LinkedIn, like, we need help. We need, I mean, even my old property is looking for, like, 45 positions. I mean, it's it's not, they can't find help because people, a couple, I mean, they're they're looking for alternative means. And I was one of those that decided to, you know, when you go through COVID, you know, you you think prior to COVID, I don't know what else I have to offer, right? I went to school for this. This is what I'm passionate about. Where do I go? How do I start? How do I make the same type of dollar? You know, and then you, you start to realize like, is it about the money or is it about the quality of life? Is it about, you know, a few things? And a few people told me, you know, you know, what really started all of this change for me to get out of hospitality. Someone said to me, you know, how old are your parents? Oh, they're in their early 70s. How often do you see them? Uh, maybe twice a year, if I'm lucky. Right? From, they live in Philly. Either they come down, I go up. We'll let's just say twice a year. I'm like, all right, well, let's just say they only live 10 more years. That means you're going to only see them 20 more times, right? And I've been gone from that neck of the woods for eight years. And I was like, man, I'm going to see my mom and dad only 20 more times? I was like, you can't put a number on that. And that was just like, whoa. So then I was going through, I'm like, all right, so let me let me change some of like the rhythms of what I'm doing day to day. How do I change? How do I do it? So I went to the grind. I went on, I did the whole like LinkedIn thing and I started posting and applying it, all different things. Like what, what, what where can I go from here? I didn't even know. It was just fresh. How do I start all over? Did a couple odd gigs, didn't know they weren't good. And then I, I landed in public adjusting. And what's great about this is that there's there's obviously plus size and plus and minuses to every industry. But one of the biggest plus for me is creating and having flexibility of my own schedule. Right. right. I, I want to go back to one thing. That yeah. You said. Go for so it. I think that applies to you and maybe a couple of people that you deal with. 
but like I took my car to Mercedes to get a tire mm. and like I know him and the guy's like look I can't get any workers yeah yeah, yeah. I, he's like you know oh Tom, it's everywhere he's like Tommy you know I'd hook you up but he's like I mean I could bump you up like a week but it's gonna be and I used to go in and by the end of the day he'd be like go oh, it's ready and then I went to Goodyear I got shout out to Rodney at Goodyear they got the machine mm -hmm. the band, every, every car and they're just as good and half the price yep yep so I go to him He's like, I only got one tech, man. And again, he would hook me up, you know, because I tip him because he gives yeah, me a yeah, deal yeah. and, yep, and yep. he knows I'm in a rush and they can't get workers. So maybe that couple people you talk to, but what I think from the people I've talked to and just observing, if you're giving 150 k to him on a stimulus package and then another 10 k and then another 5 k and 10 k why the fuck are you going to go to work? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, honestly, I mean, you're, you're talking about uh, like – uh, it's such a problem within the country that doesn't fall under one type of. It's an umbrella approach, right? right. It, it touches so many different type of. You can't. Of industry. You can't give out this kind. No, it, look, it's. They were going to give me 180. Yeah. Okay. And they hate me, so of course they fucked me. I got pre-approved and everything, but like I know people that don't that don't make a hundred grand. They got over a hundred grand, yeah. and then they got another ten and twenty. Yeah. So you know they're sitting back saying, well wait a minute, I got almost a quarter million here in the last six months, and I've seen it with my own eyes because yeah. I didn't believe them. Yeah, yeah. Why am I going to wake up at 8 o'clock and go to work? Yeah, agreed. What they forget is that money, you know, the more you make, the more you spend. Now you yeah. start going out to a nice dinner, yeah. you vacation. What are you going to do when that runs out? Yeah, no, and it's also some of like, you know, when you talk about the, the demographic of like the younger adults that are in, is, you know, I'll just continue in the hospitality industry. Those that were maybe hosts or hostesses or busters or, you know, cooks or things people that weren't making crazy money and now the stimulus package is, is giving them the salary that they were making plus and they're sitting home that's what i'm saying and they don't you're also talking about that generation that's like cosin i'm cool yeah. you know i don't i'll just sit on instagram all day i don't you know, I'm, day. I'm still from oh, that okay. where i get up i grind i do it i figure it out I don't like being home. Who doesn't like sitting on the couch from time to time? But like, we're we're tenacious enough where the we're, we keep going, you know. But that demographic's like, you know what? Like, I'm making, you know, you talk about a hostess that makes I don't know twelve, thirteen dollars an hour, works three, four days a week, makes a couple hundred bucks, maybe a thousand, fifteen hundred in a month. They're now pulling a stimulus check. No, granted, it's been a minute. Well, no, it's like four or five grand for the month, right? And yeah. you're you're like a forty to fifty thousand dollar employee that really, at the end of the day, you were probably like a ten thousand dollar employee throughout the year because you were. But now, now you're just like, I ain't going back to work now. I mean, it's a little bit different now, but it's still at that point. Those people are coaching. They're sending them out again. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Again. Yeah. 100%. This is the fourth one. It's it's the first ones were like a hundred k. Yeah. The second ones were like fifty to eighty. The third ones were fifty to eighty, and now this one's like ten twenty. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And the the problem is many problems. People aren't going to work because yep. of it. And then if you're in a place like California or New York, you can't even go to work to half the places. So now you get accustomed to staying home. Now what are you gonna do? Get up and go to work? If you got money in the bank, no, you're not gonna no, go. No, no, yeah, you know? Yeah. Did you get stimulus? I did for my business. Not yeah. I got yeah. nothing for my person. I got I tried with my I got hundred and six thousand for uh for the company See? yeah i never got a penny because i was working the whole time i didn't get shit yeah so i there was a part of me that was like i was so glad in the moment when i was working i was like man i feel great there you know there were we had like 30 something managers and there was five of us left five or six of us left that that worked during covid and i was so grateful it's like i'm working did you I'm making get it? money no i didn't get any yeah. yeah because i was working right so i didn't get unemployment no i mean did you get any COVID? did you get COVID? No, no 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 i was so you know what's funny tommy is that Back of January 2020, I got, I don't know what I got, right? Whether or not it was just flu, COVID, it, that shit put me out for like five, six days. You probably had it. I probably had it. And it's funny when I talk to family or friends or whatever, they're like, you definitely had it. You de but I mean, at that point, it wasn't a thing yet, right? It was it was in its adolescence, right? People knew about it, but not like, it didn't, it didn't really fuck with us until maybe March, right? But I this is like jan early January because my birthday's in January, so friends were down and visiting, and uh, I, I was a mess. I couldn't move. It was just, it shook me up, but I thought I just had the flu, and then once the whole COVID, and I was like, man, so since then I haven't, I've been blessed, 
you know, I, I haven't had any type of illness, nothing of that nature. Now, whether or not I had it then or not, you know, I was always someone that was fortunate where I was never, I never really got sick. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, I don't know. It was, just, it was you know, just blessing. I sense. thought I had it. I thought for sure I had it about a month ago, maybe maybe three weeks ago. I thought for sure. Oh. I woke up kind of like a sore throat, stuffy, but I get. Uh, Did you get vaccinated? Hell no. Oh, uh, okay, okay. I get a, a blood test every Tuesday. Uh-huh. I, my doctor does it for me just to, because, you know, I see a bunch of people and sometimes i'll swab i've mm-hmm, been here and mm-hmm, shit because mm-hmm. you know people are like especially when somebody flies in from new york or yeah, yeah, california yeah. or just on a plane in general mm-hmm. you know i sometimes if i don't know them you know from the past or whatever you know and depending on the personality i might ask them to do a swab but in my opinion if i didn't get it yet i'm probably at some point gonna get it but I'm ready. I, I got my fucking uh, cocktail well, it's, ready to it's, go. It's funny that you had that perspective because I have a few friends of mine that are like, By the well, way, I, I haven't ended got up it not yet. having it. You know what I did? I got z pack and I took it for two days and it was gone. And you were just Yeah, like, it was just, just like- Just common cold. It was like a two-day cold. Yeah. And yeah. I wasn't sleeping much, yeah. as you know, when yeah, I text you true. at yeah. 438. Yeah, I was like, what is this? Then I text you again at 8. Yeah. You know? I don't know. It was funny. That I, I've re- I'm re-watching the, the show Lost mm. from like <laughs> early 2000s. Uh, and I, so I was up watching that and, uh, I, my, your text goes off and normally I'm, I'm sound asleep by like 11 and change, but I got so captivated by it and I've already watched it, but it's been so long since I've watched it. So I'm like struggling to fall asleep. And then your, your text goes through and I'm like, shit. I was like, let me, I forgot to message Tommy. So I'm like plugging away at 1.30 in the morning. But yeah, you're you're wired, man. You're, you know how that you. is, though, but you're on that and you're coding. Like I'm coding. Okay. Right? And you you lose track of time because you're like, you got to be lasered in because one wrong line, you fuck everything. So, so you're like in the matrix with that shit. I'm like in the matrix. So, you know, I start at, say, 11.30 and I'm just there looking at the line. Okay, that's not it. That's not, You know, I'm going through it because they always change and everything. And then I look up and I go, oh, fuck, it's three. But, you know, I'm in the middle of, yeah, of yeah, that. Yeah. And then it's like coding is very complicated. So what time are you getting up in the morning? Um, Like 9.45. Oh, so, I mean, you're getting up so good time. But I lay down about 3, 4. Taking that. No, no, uh, 3, 4 a.m. Oh, I lay 3, down. 4 a.m. I yeah. thought you were saying you were taking midday Then nap. I have sleeping. I, I yeah, have yeah, sleeping yeah. issues to begin with. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you figure another half an hour. So maybe 4.30 I'm in bed up at 9.30 is Five at best. So you're average of five. You are you taking that midday? No. Oh, so I love and then it. I wake up, don't eat, run two and a half miles, yeah. go in my sauna for thirty minutes, and then go work out. I build a gym out back and yeah. go work out, and then go for you. Every, every, way. every fucking yeah. day. I still think you need to get some more sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, I, I agree yeah. with you, but it's just it, yeah, it's, you're just wired. It, it, That's... It's not that I'm wired. It's, it's I, well, just, I mean, I don't know if those things are helping you. I mean, they they help, but I'm so used to them. Yeah, it, yeah. It's it's more so uh, like I. When I have a business that's mm-hmm. my own, for me to have somebody help me do it, they got to really be good. Because yeah, I, yeah. And I'm an asshole, you know, and, you know, like Dan's my friend, Rob's my friend and shit like that. And it's a two way street because the problem I have with myself or just with people in, in general is I, I personally can separate business from friendship. Right. So if me and you get if you're working for me and I say, Ryan, what the fuck are you doing? Right, that has nothing to do with. Hey, you want to go to dinner tonight? Yeah, you can decompartmentalize. But it. most people, you know, if I say, you know, what the fuck, you know, like, what's going, what the, what the fuck is the problem? This is how I want it done, and if you're not going to do it right, then quit. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's how I'm aggressive like that. Because if I'm putting in all this time and bringing you in with me, and you can't see what the future holds, then go fuck yourself, mm-hmm. right? But a lot of people can't separate that. They can't just let that go. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. keep that. Business. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. And even if the business doesn't work out and you stop working together, that has nothing to do with going to dinner. Yeah, but now they allow the friendship to right. Then it fucks. It everything. cannibalizes it. Yeah, because I'm, you know, I I, I can't do a nine to five. Yeah. I can't work for somebody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It will drive. It, yeah. I can't. I've yeah. tried twice. Yeah. In my whole life, in the last two weeks. Yeah. So, I've always had my own shit. So when I do it, if I'm putting my all into it, like yeah. four o'clock in the morning, up at nine. Yeah. Whoever's with me better be ready to go. Yep, and, yep, yep. and don't expect to come in and make a gazillion dollars. Mm-hmm. Just look at the long term. Look at my track record. That's yeah, what yeah, you got to yeah, do. Yeah. You know, but people are idiots. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's funny because I was always that corporate driven guy that just thought that was 
part of the the rhythms of what you're supposed to do. You're grown up that way. You're raised to, you know, you need to go do this. You need to work for this company. You get a 401k. You know, you're structured. You're engineered oh, a specific. No, and I agree. So now, and it's it's funny. Uh, I don't know who it was. If it was Brad Shapiro. No, I don't think it was Brad. I forget who it was. But someone was talking about. Someone was interviewing someone, and was like, you know would you recommend my daughter going to college nowadays? And the guy, and he's an influence, uh, and, 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 and I forget where and how he was like, honestly, he's like, no, he's like, I would tell you it's a waste of their money nowadays. I agree. You know what I mean? Like it's now you're, and I was just having this conversation with my sister a couple of weeks ago about it. You know, you're dumping 45, you know, 30, 45 grand in every year. And now people, you don't even, you know, you don't need, unless you're going to become, that piece of paper, unless you're going to become a doctor, a lawyer, you know, things of that nature. I, I feel like that investment sometimes you're never going to get that return on investment that you originally had. And most of those people channel different direction. And that, that, that was for me. And now it's, I couldn't be happier with what I'm doing now. My mental, like, um, stability, it's, maybe. it's, it's nuts. My mental health has been, I, I didn't, I knew that I needed to make the change, but I wasn't sure how it was going to affect me mentally, but it has been the best. I, I couldn't, I mean, it was, I walked into work every day at the resort and it was always felt like, you know, how, where am I going to yell at? What did I do wrong from yesterday? Where am I going to this? And where it was like constant, like you never, it was constant pressure, constant, all of this. And it was extremely unhealthy. Right. And you brought it home. I had a second phone with me wherever I went out to dinner you know, I had a second phone. I'm answering it. If I, I, I had to respond constantly. It was like I was a doctor, and it was just it just it it just controlled your life. And then since I've made that change, I mentally you can't you can't gain that back, right? So when I'm or more or less like that, that what it took from me was so much. But now I'm trying to play a little bit of catch up, and it's hard. But and I'll never be able to do it. But the quality of life is so important, and being able to start fresh, start something new that you're able to. I mean, I go onto my calendar and I create my own thing. If I'm like, you know, I don't want to do anything today on Tuesday, and I want to go to the golf course, I'm gonna to go to the golf course, or I'm gonna go make dinner plans with friends on Wednesday night, or I'm gonna to go to the the 76ers Heat game on Saturday. I'm gonna go do it. Like I have that ability. But you know you don't. How much of a financial hit have you taken? Though? So that that was tough. I mean, I'm I'm you know it was it was one of those like you're going six figures and you're making it and you're doing well and it's there and then all of a sudden you you just completely cut that right because now you are 1099 employee when I work for as a public adjuster. Yeah. You know you're you're an independent contractor. You're your own entrepreneur. You create your own whatever That's you one do. hell of a switch, bro. Right, it is. <laughs> I mean it's 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 polarizingly different, but I was just like, you know what? Like let me go do it. Let me just do it. I'm going to figure it out and let me let me just I'm going to go. I'm tenacious enough. I'll figure it out and I'll and I'll and I'll go that route. So it, there's no doubt it wasn't easy, right? You got to start from and even when you start from scratch, even when you're able to help a homeowner and we'll kind of get into it and how that all happens, you don't you don't get paid unless a homeowner gets paid and then that could take 3 months, 6 months, 9 months, a year depending on what the problem is with their home. So you may not get cut a check for a minute, right? But those checks are heavy special yeah they're different you know what's funny last night i had this guy in uh joey i always fuck up his name not not that you're surprised because i yeah. asked you to say your name 17 times it was his name's uh joseph mick brathy okay right? uh he was in the movie hitch yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, his dad got whacked by the gambinos when he was young okay uh he's a private investigator now he's doing interventions he was on uh american psychic challenge he won that or no, no he was second place Okay. He won uh, Guess the Lyrics. Okay. Yeah, he was like most days. I bet you if I saw him, I would know him. Off the top of my head. He won 200 k on there. Um, He he was in the movie uh, Mobsters. He was in uh, like Broadway play Sopranos before Sopranos was Sopranos. Got it. Uh, A lot of game shows. um, And now he primarily does the PI thing. Okay. And then intervention, but... (laughs) In a different way. Basically, he's going to duct tape you and throw you in the trunk and he's not fucking around and you're going to rehab. Or you can walk out and sit in the front and play the radio, whatever station you want. That was how he put it. He, he uh, and, and he's got a documentary coming out called uh, Call Call uh, Call Joe Brat. Okay. And the documentary's done. You know what I mean? But uh, the 
production company who bought it wanted to wait a little bit to release it until everything calms down. Mm. So we played a skate. It's really fucking Oh, it's that's good. cool. But the one thing with him, I'm like, how did you win all these fucking game shows? I, I mean, he won, like, who wants to be a millionaire? I mean, it was like one after. I mean, we would have been here for 19 hours. We was that's three and dope. a half hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he won all this shit. And I said to him, you know, his father got killed. So he was going through kind of a, uh, as he was growing up, he was going down the wrong path. Mm. You know, and, and he started to see himself becoming his father in New York. So he came home one day and, you know, everybody got sick of his shit you know, his family, and he just had a TV and a couch. And, you know, everybody, whether it's drugs or whatever it may be, whatever you want to call rock bottom, mm. that, for whatever reason, woke him up and was like, I, I got to change my life because I don't want to be anything like my father. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, who got, you know, yeah. who took, who got murdered. Pop. Okay? So I said to him numerous times, he said, how the fuck are you winning these things? And he said, I go with my instinct. So I do it. I question myself. Mm. But... You know, I'm sitting with him three hours and everything he was saying to me, he's like, I don't ever question myself. Mm -hmm. So like with you, yeah. like you going from mm -hmm. a re like a, a hotel and restaurant mm -hmm. uh, gig yeah. to fucking claims adjusting. I mean, yeah. that, that's, a lot like, of structure that's going... like a fucking apple and an orange. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, Tommy. It was it was you talk about just complete opposite spectrum, right? It's just not even go, close. Right. You go from something structure, there's standard operating procedures, you know what the rhythms are, you have a check that comes in. You know, it was and I tried so when I left the resort, I worked at two other oper two other spots that were structured like that, that were in sales opportunities that gave me the nine to five balance I was looking for weekends off. And that was the original, that was that was the goal when I left the resort was how do I find something that allows me holidays off, you know, just like the normal life for most people, holidays off, weekends off, nine to five. Like I was just like, get me that with the same type of pay structure I was making to some degree and I'm good. I'm not looking to make, okay, so just, yeah, I just want to be around my family. Now when you do this, being that you blew off your family basically for 20 yeah, years. Yeah. How accepting are they? Oh, they love it. They, oh my God! Yeah. No yeah. grudges. No, no, nothing. no. No, I mean it's, it's so. I mean, my my father and my mother are both just I, probably. I mean, everybody's gonna say, well, to some degree, the best people in the world, right? And they they just they're just genuine gems, like just amazing people. I wouldn't be half of the person if I was if I wasn't raised in that type of environment, right? Brothers, sisters, the whole nine yards. So I it. At the time when I was going through it in my 20s, it was like my father's like, you got it. You got to go through the grind. Right. You just that's the thing. And at some point you're going to come out on the other end of it. Right. And you're going to be you're going to benefit. You're going to be the GM of a hotel and you're going to be able to create your own schedule and things. Like that. And I thought that, too, man, like I was going through, I'm like, I'm just going to climb this ladder. And it's going to get easier. But as you go and the higher you go, it doesn't get any easier. There's well, more you're, you're responsibilities. Dealing with, you're dealing with big time corp. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you know yeah. I mean? yeah. So it's not like you're dealing, um, you know, where, where you're working at maybe like a Home Depot where you could easily come up to or like a. Uh, like a bank, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you're really good, you could be like Eastern District sure, manager, sure. and you have all the banks in the Eastern District and make a ton. Yep. With what you're doing, is you're where you're at, and you might get like an increase, increase, but it, you're never going to be at the top because no. the top is the board. Yeah, correct. I mean, it was one of those, you know, it was you, it, it was all, it was, you were so petrified of what else do I do? Yeah, I understand. Right? Like that was that was the the thing that kind of kept you at bay was where do I go? How do I start over? And I think honestly like a lot of people uh not only in hospitality but in life during COVID allowed them the ability to think outside the box, right? Now that you are forced to figure it out. Where before, why am I going to leave this? Why am I going to I get paid? I make uh, make a pretty good living. I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm happy with what I got. You know, I got a nice car, I got a house. Like, why am I going to, you know, try to shake things up where I feel comfortable? And then with COVID happening and everybody kind of being like brought back to ground zero, it forced people to think of alternative ways to make money. You you had to push yourself outside the box and it made you think differently. And that was to me, not that I created, you know, some, you know, I created some new software I thought outside the box to some degree, but it allowed me to think I'm going to be okay. Right. I'm, but what made you pick insurance adjusting? So it, it's funny. Um, I, I didn't know what direction to go. Like I said, I went to two different sales gigs and I thought that was the route. And then a good buddy of mine, uh, 
um, checking out his Instagram. I, I actually used to be his boss years ago. And uh, I'm looking on his Instagram. Like, this this cat's like, I tease him still to this day. Uh, I'm like, he's in, like, Tulum, right? He's in courtside Lakers game. He's Miami. You know, he's all over the map. This, and let me this guess. Cat, yeah, that's the one you were talking about that was on the insurance, right? Well, no, yeah. So that's how he, he's a public adjuster. So yeah. I, I was just like, so I hit him up. And I'm like, yo, what are you doing? I mean, I so other friends of ours that were all in that circle, we'd all talk. We'd be like, yo, what is this guy doing? Like, I, he must be massively in debt. Like, now, just, did you meet him through the hotel business? Yeah, so I was his boss back in the day. So we became, you know, we became close and friends and we kept in touch and things of that nature. So I saw him going through life and just like being able to go and he's here, he's there. And that. I'm like, oh, what are you doing? And he's like, man, I, I became a public adjuster because one of his good guy friends – you know, and the, the became a public adjuster like years before that, and now it's like a whole crew of them that you know are all. It's a good. It's a bunch of people that kind of came up through it, and um, he's like, you know, it's. Will you get to be exactly what you want? What you're looking for, right? You get to create your own schedule. You're gonna make more money. I mean, he literally said, and it's funny. He's like, you'll never make the same kind of this kind of money unless you are a hip hop artist or a professional athlete with the amount of hours you put into it. Because you can make really great money, and it's not so much for me that part of it. Which obviously yes, but it's what I love about it is that I still get the the hospitality side of me where I get to help homeowners put their insurance claim in. So the problem is is that a lot of people don't know what public adjusters are or what it is, right? And I, you, I had an engineering yeah. firm and I don't know what the fuck Right. It is. Okay, perfect. And so then it's you a great also example. I'd say that that there's uh you run into a lot of conflicts with homeowners and then being an an insurance adjuster. Yeah, so So first I want to ask you what the hell is an I mean, yeah. I know like the basis of it, but explain what an insurance adjuster is what you do. Sure. And then why that that's a conflict with the homeowner. So I'll tell you a little bit of, so I'll give you a quick synopsis of, of a little bit of both. So there's there's two different parts of being an insurance adjuster whether you're not you're a public or you're an insurance adjuster. So let's say you have a home and you have an issue, maybe you have a leak in your ceiling your pipe bursts in your bathroom, your kitchen sink's leaking, something something bad happens within your home that you need to put an insurance claim in to get compensated to fix said problem. Just like your car insurance, you have homeowner's insurance, right? It's the same process. You get in a car accident, you call your insurance company. So when with your homeowner, you call your insurance company, they're going to send Joe Schmo, right? And he's going to come out and he's an insurance adjuster. He's an advocate for the insurance company. So they're not insurance companies aren't in the business of handing out checks. So they're never going to compensate you like what you actually need to get compensated to fix it appropriately. They're going to look at it like to get you through what you need, here's $1,500 when really you need like six grand to fix the whole problem because they're going to take the deductible and things like that. So an insurance, insurance adjuster is hired by the insurance company to come out, document the things, and then they send that back to the insurance company. The insurance company will then review what was documented and then they'll make an educated decision on what they think is best as compensation. Well, well they'll make their educated right, decision. Right, correct, which is never what the homeowner needs. Right. So a public adjuster works on the opposite side, right? So we we fight the insurance company on behalf of the homeowner. So the problem is with public adjusters, not so much a problem, just people don't know who we are because we're not in every state. You know, there's probably about 10 to 12 states uh, do not allow public adjusters. That is, when I'm a l- licensed public adjuster, so you have to be licensed in the state. You have to take exams. You got to go through courses. It's not just something you're like, you woke up tomorrow and you're like, I'm going to be this thing. Like you, it's a it's a credible resource. You had to take an exam, go through like a, I think it was like, forty or fifty hour course that you have to go through, um, to get licensed. And so basically, what happens is that now you have a problem with your home. You don't go through your insurance company. You you call a public adjuster. Everybody knows what an electrician is. Everybody knows what a plumber is. People don't know what public adjusters are. So when you have an issue with your home, you call a representative to be able to battle your insurance company properly because we know how to read your policy. We know the the ins and outs, the language of it. We know how to kind of negotiate that process. We have we hire engineers. We hire certain technical support to be able to come out to review your home to be able to get you what you need to be compensated but appropriately. But doesn't that all cost the homeowner? No. So that's the luxury of it. So the so let's just say hypoth- when you go through this as a homeowner, when you hire a public adjuster, there is no fee that you 
that comes out of your pocket through this entire process. I know you're like, that's crazy. I don't believe it. But no, it's 100%. What about on the back end? No, nothing. At the end of the day, it doesn't cost a homeowner one penny because what happens is, so even if I hire an engineer to come out, the engineer charges your insurance company to get paid out. I see. Right? So if I hire then um, an estimator, someone who comes out and scopes out your whole home, I actually pay out of my pocket for that, knowing that at some point once the claim settles, I'm going to get compensated to pay for that, right? From the insurance. From the insurance side. Yeah. So now let's just say um, you have some, let's say you have a kitchen, your your kitchen sink underneath. So I'll throw you an example, right? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so my air conditioner breaks in my house, uh-huh. right? And under my homeowner's insurance, that's covered. Uh-huh. Some prick comes in and he says, look, uh, insurance says 2K. Mm-hmm. Now the air conditioner is 6K. I call you. Mm-hmm. And now you fight with the insurance Correct. to get me 5, 6K. Correct that is what on the paperwork mm-hmm. technically I'm supposed to get because it's still under that yep. it's still in that uh, umbrella type of umbrella thing. Yeah. timeline no. or whatever so then what you or you and your company do is then you fight with the insurance Correct. rather than the homeowner to get that 5 or 6 grand Correct now <clears throat> why is that a conflict for you between the two It's not so much a conflict it's one of those insurance adjusters are advocates for the insurance company where we're advocates for the homeowner. So they they don't they don't like us because we're trying to get more money from right. their company, so, right? And it's they don't they're not in the business of handing out checks. So we're trying to fight but at the end of the day the principle of a public adjuster is always to get the homeowner back to the previous state before loss. So whatever that is. So let's just say you have a roof and it, a really bad storm hits and now you have broken tile all over your tile roof and now you start to have some water damage through it. You call your insurance company up. They're going to come out, and they're only going to give you enough money to replace a few of the broken tiles <laughs> and a little bit of money to, to, to repaint. Yeah. Where we go through and we, comp- and we get the whole roof repaired because the other thing is some of the language behind it. A roof, typically tiles last about five, six years before that they are no longer – that they're um, – Exp- not expire, what's the one I'm looking for? They don't make them anymore, right? So a lot of these homes in South Florida tile roofs, they're like 20 years old. They can't, You can't match that tile anymore. They don't exist. Yeah. So when we have an argument with the insurance company where, okay, so now my tile roof is all white, but now, yeah, I have 15 broken tiles. You're going to come in and just replace 15 of them with gray. So now my roof... <laughs> Is a completely oh, different God. color, right? So, but public adjusters know how to fight that to be able to get your whole roof compensated and fixed. I take a baseball sure. bat and fucking hit that motherfucker. Yeah, well, with every one of them tiles you yeah. put up there that was gray. Just yeah, kidding. you got to be careful. Just, just kidding. Just they, kidding. Joking. They, they can see through satellite if you have any. I'm just previous, joking. Yeah. But uh, so basically, would it be better just to call you from the gate? Yeah, hundred percent. So, I, I, if anything, uh, calling a public adjuster at the end of the day is going to be your best call. If you're if you are planning on filing an insurance claim, call a public adjuster. Not period. the insurance. Don't call your insurance company, right? Call a public adjuster. Let them battle this for you. Nothing, and I'm speaking on behalf of all public adjusters as a as as an industry. It doesn't cost them, or it, it won't cost you any money hiring a public adjuster. We get it's a contingency plan. We only get paid out once you get paid. Right, so one if your roof is forty five thousand dollars to fix it, we know that we got inspection work out there that says it's going to cost forty five k. We're going to fight for about fifty five k to get paid out so that we get our cut you and your deductible. Push because people don't know this, man. That's 100%. I guarantee if I put twenty people in there and, and I no say, one knows it, and I say to them, hey. If you had a bad roof, who would you call? Right. Uh, they, they would call insurance. Insurance, or they would call a, a roofer to yeah, come out. You got to push that. Yeah, and that's the thing. And that's where, and I was, I mean, we were talking earlier is that I'm on 640 Radio AM and, uh, as well, talking about public adjusting because people just don't know about it. And even if, you know, I talked about this on, on the radio the other day is denied claims, right? So you own a home, you call your insurance company. I just had this with one of uh, one of my clients right now. So she calls me up and she's like, hey, Ryan, um, you know, 
I go through the process with her, and she goes, I got denied. And I said, well, why did you get denied? She goes, well, I called and said it was a flood. Meanwhile, she had water intrusion through her window, rain, because now she her windows are not sealed properly, and that's part of your insurance claim. So now she's got water intrusion, now her floor is messed up. But she called it a flood, right? Because mm-hmm. she doesn't know. She's not she doesn't educated. know the right word. She doesn't know the verbiage, right? So she calls the insurance company and says, hey, I have a flood. A, she doesn't even have flood insurance. So they just straight up were like denied, right? Right off the bat. They didn't even come out to her look at her home. They just denied her off the jump. So I was able to go in there and be like, well, it's because you don't have A, you don't have flood insurance. B, this isn't a flood. This is what we call wind damage. And it's a windstorm and it's it's wind driven rain that comes through. And we know how to go through the process to be able to verbal. Now shut the fuck up, lady. Let yeah, me let, me, and, and let me let me help you. No, and, and, and she's super sweet and been able to help her. And that's the other I don't mean no, ma'am, no, I don't no. mean shut By the fuck up. Means, I, yeah. I'm saying like let Ryan talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's you know what's great about it too, Tommy, is that it's it's still helping people. So it's yeah. still the hospitality side of me. I get that that heart, itch that I have. Yeah. I still get to scratch it because I still get to help people. See, our stay goes. Yeah. Fun. Our, our hearts get fucking mangled. Right. That, and they're also, it's a bad thing too. Mm-hmm. Because it, it creates a lot of problems. Yeah, it does. It does. But I mean, it's like when when you get those natural disasters, those hurricanes, like yeah. Louisiana just got beat up. Public adjusters are out there. They're Louisiana helping. Louisiana always getting. Yeah, they're they're getting. They're, it's always getting. Hey, did up. you know what a public adjuster was? Like he's talking about prior to Probably him not. explaining this. I did not. Yeah, and see. sitting here listening to it, I feel like the big thing he should be doing is explaining this like an attorney. If you get sued by somebody. You don't walk into court on your own because you're going to get shot to death with verbiage. You need to kind of yeah, you know, yeah. That's a good point. There yeah. you go. Just look at the camera and say yeah. No, that's yeah. absolutely right. And it's funny because we also we have attorneys that yeah, represent this is us. Very as educational well. for yeah. a lot of people. Yeah, you know what I mean. Absolutely. And we have even when it gets to a point where so whatever we, whatever he just asked in like bigger words than I know. Can you explain what he just asked? He's basically saying so <laughs> like Sorry. you hire. I didn't pay attention. Yeah, obviously, you hire an attorney if you're in legal. You have legal issues. You hire an attorney. They understand the verbiage. They know how to go and fight that battle in the court system on a very dumbed-down scale. It's what I do on a homeowner side where you don't understand. When you look at a, your policy and insurance policy, it could be anywhere like you know five to like 45 pages long, right? Mm-hmm. And we know how to read those policies and know where we can we, – where we're al- – allowed and able to battle certain things within your insurance policy to be able to get you compensated appropriately because the most important thing is is not allowing you to pay as a homeowner to pay out of pocket for your damages that's the point of having insurance even though insurance is you know there's there's pluses and minuses to them don't get me wrong but at the end of the day what's really difficult is when an insurance company doesn't want to take care of a homeowner appropriately for the damages that they're sitting in like they got a foot of water in their home and they're denying claim like not our and it's just it's amazing and you feel for these people especially during a natural disaster and that's what we talked about originally when living in south florida why it's better for me is that um you know there's there's more of those type of like storms that hit versus orlando and i not that i ever want a storm to happen. Get the fuck but, out of here. You want a store, storm to happen without anybody dying. Well, yeah, and without anything <laughs> severe. Right. I mean, you you do like storms because it, fuck it's- Fuck it, knock out the house, just leave and you get a new yeah. house. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's it's one of those things where it is, that that's where our industry becomes more successful when there is a storm that really kind of does, and not, no one in our world wants any major, yeah, like you mentioned. No, no, I agree. Yeah. But yeah, it a is storm, good for business, so. it's good for business. And it's sad because you you're you benefit off of the demise of others, but at the end of the day, you're there to help them during the demise of what they're going through. You're at then the good advocate justification, form. my right. man. So yeah, that's just, how you balance it. No, that's a, uh, but it's I agree true though. It's true I agree though. with you. It's like, you're in a shitty situation and I'm there to help you to be able to bring you back to life and at the end of the day, I'm only I'm successful in those shitty situations. Hey, my house went up 200k in the last two years. You can burn that yeah. down any day you want. <laughs> yeah, my. It's I'll funny. call you. It's funny. I think I like the match. I bought mine. Actually, no, because I bought mine, and I think it's like it's like up <laughs> 75, 80 somewhere. I couldn't in believe it. It's it's stupid. Somebody, I, I think my girl. T- somebody told me when I'm get the fuck out. Yeah. And I looked and I'm like, what the hell? And you know what? I to me, 
I said, oh boy, here we go. The problem is, the problem is you go and you decide to sell your home, yeah. then where are you going to fucking go? Yeah. Because everything else is jacked yeah. up. Yeah, because maybe I get four or five for mine, yeah. and then where, where I want to go that was four eight, or five nine. is now eight, nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, not yeah, like you're, I'm you're, the only one. Yeah, you might as I mean? well as just coast. I mean, that's, the, like I was mentioning when I first moved down here, I, I had one buddy of mine and he was became my realtor. And I went through this process, and I said to him not that long ago, I was like, yo, Mike, I'm, you know, maybe I'll, you know, do a little flip. And he's like, where are you going to go? He's like, you know, you go rent an apartment, you know, you're, the spot you had that was sixteen, seventeen grand or sixteen, seventeen hundred a month or eighteen, whatever. Now, now that's twenty nine. Yeah. yeah. Where are you gonna go? Yeah. You know. And I was like, okay. You know. Now's I, not the time. Yeah. No. So yeah. I just coast and relax, and I mean, it's a good spot. So I mean, it's. But I, it, one of like kind of going back to being a public adjuster, and I think the big thing is just, you know, what you guys touched on is is letting people know that we exist and if you are going through any insurance claim don't do it without representation have someone be there for an advocate and if you've ever filed an insurance claim on your home on your own on your home or commercial doesn't have to be just residential and you got denied that don't give up you just call myself or a public adjuster because we know how to you probably just did it inaccurately but that doesn't mean it's it's over and you're like i'm i'm done now i got to sit no you just maybe you did it in like i was giving that example the lady who put a flood insurance when it had nothing to do with flood we reopened it, and now I'm going through the process with her, and I'm going to get her probably sixty thousand dollars to fix what she had. I wish I would have fucking known this because yeah. <clears throat> my air conditioner went out maybe a year ago, mm -hmm. and they had to do all the duct work and everything. Yeah, and it was like eight maybe, and you know what I got? Maybe twenty six hundred. Yeah, yeah. We got to pay a deductible. Yeah, right? I, I, yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean I, that's the other problem is that we we build the deductible as part of the process. So if, if we know that it's going to cost you. Ten thousand dollars, hypothetically, right? But we know your deductible is twenty-five. We're asking for twenty-five, or excuse, yeah, twenty-five hundred. We're not asking for ten. We're asking for twenty-five. You take the deductible out. Now you have a check that, for ten. Right. So it's like fucking health insurance, where they, where they fuck in. They're like, okay, well, you know, it's only four hundred a month, but to get any type of insurance, you got to spend ten for. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, that that backwards. If I get in a car crash, I'm fucked because yeah. I, because I refuse to pay it. Oh yeah, like okay. a moron. Yeah, uh, I mean, other people in my family have it, but me, I'm just a moron. Yeah, yeah I uh, just refuse. Just yeah, I refuse. Insurance is different. I mean, it's just it's funny like getting into it. I mean, we talked about like going from one thing to another and just complete opposite. Well, it seems like the the hotel business and the beverage business through your networking is what led you to where you're at now. Yeah, I mean, it's it's funny. Uh, you know, we were chopping it up earlier. And it just, I was never someone who networked. It wasn't really part of my DNA. It wasn't needed. When I worked in the resort, you clocked in, you clocked out, or any of the hotels I worked in, you networked within the people, your friends, and things of that nature, but you never branched outside of that, you know, social media. You know, you do it uh, as your own I hate thing. Media. Yeah, but I mean, it's I just like, I have to. Yeah, well, you take a photo of yourself or wherever you're here, whatever. You do it once every few days and you call it quits, and that's it. That's the extreme of it. And then when I left that, and got into this, I realized the importance of networking and meeting people and social media. And the, and it's, it's, it's interesting because I'm an outgoing person. And so I enjoy those. I go to networking events, I meet people. And I, some of the, you know, we were talking about the radio station. That's how I met, you know, Rob through that was through, through, uh, through a networking event. You never know what door opens up something unless you apply yourself, like meeting yourself, you know, being able to do these type of things and what doors those will open. But it was never part of my comfort zone in the past. I, I hated it. Yeah. It's, I, and when I don't, I personally don't really like people. Yeah. I never thought I would be doing this. Got it. Ever. Got it. Oh, ever that's interesting. In, yeah. because i i just i'm not it's not that i'm not a people person it's just i i don't like snakes yeah yeah and, yeah, and when i yeah. and and i'm not i'm adjusting to this new uh citizen people type shit sure you know what i mean yeah, yeah. and 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 florida is not the place to adjust yeah. because everybody down here is a fucking manipulator yeah 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 uh, but <clears throat> i'm working everybody on, has their own agendas for sure but i went to their do you know who uh victor concepcion is that doesn't sound you, right. I, I think if you saw him, you know him. He has, he has a big event. It was, it's the first event I've ever went to that was actually like a networking event. Okay. He he came in because he does all – I, I'd be here for an hour. He does shit like we – like all day, all night he's working. And he has this thing called Wings, Wheels, and Fashion, like uh, once a year, and then he has a bunch of other events. But the one I went to was called Wheels, Wings, and Fashion. So you go in. He's got a fashion show with women. He's got a couple people uh, performing, like singing and shit. 
And then there's all kinds of stands. Like you might have a stand. There was a art guy, really cool yeah, yeah, guy. Yeah, okay. he, he, I mean, hundred thousand dollar paintings he was selling of like Patrick uh, Mahomes, mm -hmm. Marino, Brady, Tupac, Biggie, hundred k. Boom, boom, hundred k. I don't know what he paid for the thing, but. They're all there. But then, you know, you have all these stands. I mean, even a hot sauce guy that was on YouTube. He's he's like a big time YouTuber with hot sauce. Like he'll go around and put hot oh, sauce. Oh, yeah, you know yeah. I love that guy. Yeah, yeah I he, watch that shit all the time. He's coming in next week. Oh, uh, not, not next week. Next uh, what's month. his name? Uh, bold. I love that shit. Skinny. Skinny yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how he Well, I that. met him there. Oh, okay. And he came up to me and he said, hey, I've seen your podcast. And then we started chopping it up. And then, you know, scheduling is, is always a bitch. And I hate the I don't have time to answer fucking the phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everybody wants to be on the phone. Yeah. Right? And I don't have time. I can text you and keep working. Yeah, yeah. I don't have time for the phone. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. And then you get, like, an agent to, you know, get guests for you. And they they don't know how, like you, right? Yeah, yeah. You know how to talk to people. You know how to talk to insurance people, mm -hmm. right? I know if I want a guest, if I can get them on the phone or even a text, I know I can can work a reasonable deal to get them in. But to put that in somebody else's hands and then them fuck it up or not do what I want, then I have to go and fix it and do double the work. Right. right. But I don't have time for all these calls. I don't understand why they just it's, can't fucking text. Yeah, yeah. You get the same point. Unless it's something like yeah, yeah. really extreme. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I don't See, know. The, the problem is for me is I'm an advocate. I like on the phone because then I can get the message across quick and it's versus text and things get misconstrued or interpreted differently. And then right. you're, you're, you're spending more time explaining a previous text than just picking up the whole. Well, you're, dealing, well you're dealing with a major thing I, well, here. Yeah, maybe, you know? but I'm just talking about like in life in general. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, sometimes, yeah. I mean, if I'm like, hey, I'm on my way, I don't need to pick up the phone and call you. I'm on my yeah. way. But I mean, some things like when it, when I'm talking to a homeowner, you know, I have some of my fellow coworkers who do a lot of texting. That's how they communicate with the homeowner. I rather just pick up the phone and just yeah. talk and we hash if it. If I was in your business, I would be on the phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's it's more personal. Yeah, and that's the thing that. Uh, I don't know whether or not I like it or not, but you are on the phone way more. Well, you know, I don't know now that I think about it because I had two phones at the resort. I was constantly on it. So I don't know which one I'm on, if it's this uh, this opportunity or my past, if I was on the phone a lot. But it, it, I mean, you know, probably my other one because I had two phones. And I shouldn't want to but like that. for me, right, like you coming in. Hey, Ryan, uh, Mike referred me. Yep. You know, I'd like you to come in. Would yep. you be interested in on the podcast? Yeah, I love to come. Okay, do you need a flight? Do you need a hotel? This, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. the other. Yeah, I do. What's this? What's that? Okay, what dates are good for you? What dates good for me? Back and forth. Okay, see you at five o'clock on yeah, fucking yeah, Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I get it. Yeah. I I don't need. Yeah. I don't. I don't need to. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. just send me your bio in the email, and then we'll talk when I. Yeah, see yeah, yeah. It. makes sense. I don't need to make thirty. So like, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I I've been working back and forth, back and forth with Joe Pistone, who okay. was uh, Donnie Brasco. Yeah. And it's just phone call after phone call, and, I, and I'm just like, look, yeah, enough. I don't know who I'm talking to. Number one, because my one of the an agents I have, I don't, I don't know who the fuck I'm talking to. Mm. Point blank, right? I don't know if it's his agent or one of his agents or one of the ten agents he's got, but it, it's just a bunch of shit. And basically, it just got to the point where I was like, look, when you're ready, you let me know. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I agreed to your yeah. terms when you're ready because That's it was right. like a package deal with this other guy, and then. Pistone was the one I was going for, and then the other guy who had the connection with Pistone wanted to bring his father in, who who definitely has a great story, but he's no Joe Pistone, right, right? right? So I said, okay, I'll do the package deal. Well, as time went on, then it turned into, well, my father can come, but you know we're working on. Well, I thought you had Joe, as, yeah, and, and and I'm not calling him out. I'm just saying that, yeah, yeah. you know, it. Sure. And then you want to do a phone call. I mean, you know, yeah. sure, I love to have Joe and his father, but I'm not going to do 19, 17 yeah, calls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then my original reach out was for Pistone. Mm -hmm. Sure, your dad's got a great story. If they're friends for 40 years, oh, is that what the be. guy said? Sure. Yeah. It makes it, they supposedly work together. It makes it easier to get Joe to agree for his buddy to come with him. Well, then after a month of back and forth, back and forth, it was like, well, my dad can come, but we're still working on Joe. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not doing that deal. It's yeah. the package deal or yeah. Joe or you let me know when you're ready, you know? So, but that could have all been done through text. Sure. Not 90 sure, calls. Sure. Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, you know, the other thing for me too is a lot of the demographic that I work with are a little bit older people and they just, 
they're not tech savvy. They, yeah, they don't. They, they still yeah, got the, yeah. the you, you hit mean, the you, one seven times to get the seat. Right. I mean, I, I have a gentleman that I'm working with on his roof right now that I have to go to his house and have him sign the documents instead of me being able to email him. He prints them, scans them, sends them back. I have to go and like get them. Yeah, you're you're in a hole yeah. there. Do you? Yeah. You're all phone, right? Are, are you a lot of text or phone? I'm a. <clears throat> I text a lot actually. I te- once I engage. Then I go to pretty much text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, if, if somebody uh, gets in trouble, what he does, like his self-employed businesses, if somebody gets in trouble, he helps you prepare uh, to go in front of a judge. Gotcha. And his company has developed a, like a type of a niche that say you get in trouble for A, B, C, or D, right? Normally some guy might go pick up trash and, hey, judge, I picked up trash. Well, so I have 700 other people. So what he does is he has his clients that really – that he feels have really changed and, you know, made a mistake like we all do. Mm -hmm. He'll have, he'll guide them to do things that aren't normal. And if they don't want to do it, then obviously they're, they haven't changed and he lets them go. But if they're willing, and I hope I'm not overstepping, I'm just trying to explain what you do. Yeah. But he'll say like, look, you know, why don't you go speak to a bunch of little kids? Just something different. Now you can go into the judge and, you know, Ryan went out of his way, not once just to have it on paper he went every week for two years while he was on pre-release waiting on court. Now the judge says, wow, this fucking guy really went every fucking week. He must, you know, he must be serious. Right. And he'll turn them down if, if they're not. And it helps in sentencing because it shows like we're more, well, depending on what judge you get. Right, right, right. And what district. Yeah. True. Right, that has a lot yeah. to do with it, right? Did I did I cover that pretty good to explain <laughs> that to him? Yeah, you're I'm trying to give you a plug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, you're in. Uh, it's mostly federal, federal prison consulting. People get ready to Jeez. face a sentence. Yeah. 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 And he's not like a, a schmuck like the other ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> they take you to the cleaners. Yeah. <laughs> one of our friends got taken to the cleaners by one. Oh, no. It, it, it was like a whole fucking scam. And then he, he knew him. Right? He knew who he was. And this fucking guy, he showed me the video. You would think, like, this guy was so good, bro. Because I, I was on the three-way way. He's like, you believe this motherfucker? And... um this guy was so good. You would think that he he was in like Manhattan skyrise, right? Like Times Square. Like you would think that that's where he was. He was just, oh, let me re- uh, refer you to my uh, secretary, my assistant. Meanwhile, he pulls it up. This guy lives in like a fucking shack. Yeah, right. Like the lady opens the door with a fucking, uh, what it, were the- that? It was an actual trailer park in Orlando. Oh, yeah, like, no. like for real. And I'm thinking, the, uh, you know, we're thinking the guy's in New York and- what the late? What were them long cigarettes that women used to smoke? Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, like, yeah. What do they call it? Virginia Slim. Yeah, Virginia Slim. Like this lady, yeah, yeah. it looks like she hasn't slept in a, like a year. <laughs> walks out of the house because you know there's cameras there yeah, yeah. and like a fucking stick out to here, and here it's all a manipulation. You know what I mean? It's crazy. But and he's getting paid. Yeah. 5k, 10k, 15k for real. It's crazy. Yeah. And yeah, people, I, still, people, I still can't believe the guy that hired him. He was just what a what a what a, what an odd guy. <laughs> yeah. Right. But Must. but you but listen, I was on those calls. You know what I mean? He's like, "What do you think?" And I'm like, mm, "Sounds, sounds pretty legit, guy. right? Sounds fuck." And I'm pretty good at reading. People, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. And I'm like, "Fuck, sounds good to me." And then he shows me con. the shack, and I'm like, "What the fuck?" Oh my! And the funniest thing of it all, and I have nothing against anybody, is uh, the guy ends up going away, and uh, his his account was kind of running things while he was away, and. Th- so he was in touch with the account, right? So my friend goes away. The guy like him is in touch with my accountant, right? Same accountant. Mm-hmm. Okay. So he's doing power of attorney, blah, 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 blah. So this fucking asshole accidentally sends the wrong text to the accountant. Okay. And the text is like, uh, how can I say this world? We're not going to get uh, it. Uh, he He's a, a homosexual guy, which there's no issue about that, but it was a very inappropriate sexual text to the wrong person to an accountant that has kids oh nice at, in the evening mm. <laughs> so, sure that went over well <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so i mean it's just you know it's just crazy it's a little bit off topic yeah but. yeah no, now do you see you know because you're in this real estate shit you know mm-hmm. with the uh, mm-hmm. the uh adjusting th- this has got to pop right i ask people other realtors and and they don't think so i don't care how educated they are I grew up in the streets. Mm-hmm. You kind of grew up in the streets mm-hmm. of Philly. There's no way this doesn't pop. Too much money. Prices are too high. I don't see how it doesn't pop. As in real estate in general? 
or what are you? Well, I think to? I think real, I think everything. Well, I mean, so we'll start, I, we'll start with real estate because that's I kind think, of your thing. I think I saw. I mean, I got I got a good buddy of mine. Like I said, uh, I th- so he thinks that this market stays for probably another two years the way it's it's trending, right? Uh, and and everybody and their mother went into being a realtor through uh COVID. it was just I like <laughs> no matter what you were doing you're like what are you doing now i became a realtor i mean everybody and the ma- the market became so saturated that shit there was a moment where i was like maybe i'll go this direction right yeah. because like let me change create your own schedule and that was kind of the, the 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 format that i was looking for but everybody and their mother became a realtor but i think the market stays pretty hot at some time at some point it's going to cool down i mean i don't i mean it's hard to say i have no idea what's happening in this I think, you know, I think, you know, what's really popular right now is a lot of, you know, electronic formats like Bitcoin and things of that nature. I think the world's going to go all virtual when it comes to, to money. I don't think I think banks are probably out of it in the next like 10, 15 years. Probably won't even see a bank anymore. Everything's yeah. going to be digital. So, I mean, I, I don't know what's it's so crazy to think about. You know, I try not to, you know, for me, it's like I'm trying to do what I'm what I'm getting into now what I've been into, try to buy multiple properties, you know, and then have people, you know, either live in them, I rent it out and try to, basically the format for me is, is trying to figure out ways for my money to make me money where I'm not part of that, like the machine anymore, where I'm clocking in and clocking Mm -hmm. out somewhere and just having a better quality of life. I mean, that is, that is the sole goal for me at this point in my life is just being able to, to be around right to be yeah, there I know. in the moment i mean i have been it's just it's hard sometimes even describe except for other people that are in hospitality have been through it you know trying to gain back that my little brother man is he was in food and beverage and hospitality and when i went through my change i told i said get what you got he's five years younger than me i said get out of it now and he's about to get married I said, get out of it now you know, don't go through this mess. Get out of it now. Figure out an alternative. You're still young enough. You weren't. He wasn't making like crazy great money just yet. He can find an alternative m- means to stay afloat in that. In that, you know, the problem is for me is I live within a certain quality of lifestyle, right? So, wh- you know, you live within your means, right? People. So for me, I was living within my means, and once you cut that that umbilical and that cord from you, it's hard to just now all of a sudden change your lifestyle right where maybe i'm not going out to dinner two nights out of the week right i can't live like that so So, i'll work 20 hours yeah so uh, i mean but that's i mean that's so i there's a toll with that you lose family yeah yeah yeah. there yeah correct i mean i can't tell you the last time i was home to have dinner at five or six i think uh i guess when i went to I, i went and had dinner with roger stone but other than that that was the first time i had dinner in fucking yes yeah. it was it, i'm actually amazed how much i was able to change my perspective on life in such a, a just it felt like i flipped the switch and i was just like done like and if anybody who knows me was like this guy is in hospitality through and through all the way like i was such a just that was me i just i worked hospitality loved it passion for it and then at some point i was just like I need to. I want to be around more. I want to be there in the moment more. Well, that whatever that said, is. Whoever you were saying about said to you, look, how many times have you seen? Yeah, mom? and I just lost my mom. Yeah, you were and told listen, me. Let yeah. me tell you something. You spend every fucking second you can and answer that call because mm-hmm. look, there. I've seen a lot of people go. Yeah. When, when your mom goes, oh, changes right. Paralyzes. You. Yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a different animal, and I have two absolutely amazing parents that are there that are just just the best of the yeah, best so my I mom could, was the only one that was there through all oh uh, so okay so, so I, I got both i got two just soldiers in my corner that are just my dad will come and go yeah and after yeah. this last little uh bicker we had he can go fuck himself okay so he's, well, let's he's hope done. that you guys can fix that no. at some point but no yeah. never unfixable that stuff mm-hmm. yeah but I, I don't really care about that. I care more about my mother. But you know what? I wanted to change anything anyway because, you know, I, I was struggling with it because I was like, fuck, I should answer the call. Because she called to yell at me, you know. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah, yeah. And I would never answer the phone. And it ate at me Ooh. for a while because I avoided that she was dead. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And then I went through the month of just paralyzed, sitting on a couch, not moving, not talking mm-hmm. to anybody. And through that time i realized i wouldn't have changed anything mm-hmm. if i could go back what would i do and i wouldn't have answered the phone because mm-hmm. i'm working mm-hmm. i i wouldn't have i am who i am yeah you know yep. what i mean yeah and 
I have I live a certain lifestyle and I go fucking insane until I get to that point. And I don't want to do anything illegal. Sure. Therefore, it's four o'clock in the morning yeah, nights yeah, until yeah. I get to the point. Whereas, you know, you do something illegal. Sure, you can get to that point in yeah, yeah, two yeah. months. Shortcuts. You yeah, know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. But they're going to take it all. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So Why now I, I want to get to that point and not have it taken yeah, at yeah, all. Yeah. And then eventually maybe I can go to bed at one. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And, and you'll get a sure. text at 11. Hope. Yeah, <laughs> but- that's much better than uh, one thirty in the morning. But I mean, it, it is. It's. I mean, for me, like I said before, man, the 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 whole change in perspective and just being there for you know not only just you know my parents, but I couldn't. I my my nephew, my godson, my my. It's everything. I, I've I've never you know it's crazy because like oh Uncle Ryan like and it's just. It's like I'm this like fictional character that lives in South Florida that's never around, and it's yeah. and it's really it's it's tough to swallow. But and I also I put myself in that hole, and now I'm just trying to figure out how to to get out of it. And and this opportunity allows me to be able to create a, a fl- uh, like a, a flexible schedule, be able to come and go as I please. And the other great part of it is I'm licensed in the state of Florida, so if there's an incident where you're like, hey, Rye, I I need help in Orlando, I need help in Jacksonville, I need help in my I'm licensed in the entire state, so I can just get in the car and drive, right? Yeah. And uh, that's the other good part, but that's the other downside too is driving, which I was never someone who was a huge fan of it, but now I have to find my way. But driving in Philly on 76 or whatever that is, you know, that was the worst. But, uh, you know, now here, you know, that's that's part of the business. And it's it's fun. You you Now I'm looking at my calendar every day. And I'm like, well, can I take this appointment? Then I take that appointment. I got this. I got that. But really, you got to push it because you yeah. know what? You know what comes up? LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. you have nothing there. Yeah, yeah, correct. It's bad. Yeah, yeah correct. With all due respect. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Bad. Yeah, I, I if never you would actually put time into promoting it. Yeah, you would do. You would quadruple what you're doing. Well, that's and, and going back to what we originally talked about is in hospitality. All you had LinkedIn for at that point was where you worked. You know, it's a resume that's that's put online. And they're fucking crazy anyway. Like, to yeah. promote something, they want, like, a fucking 120 minimum. Yeah, I don't Fuck even. Well, you. to pay for all. So, I mean, all, that's all I had it for, yeah. right, was for. So, then I, I flipped over to what. My, my point is, is that, like, <clears throat> the five-star claims adjusting. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's no SEO on it. No. Right? Like, it's, yeah. like, would be page 90. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, and I'm saying this respectfully. If you had that, like, up. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, and people knew what the hell that actually is. I think that's more the problem at this point right now. And yes, uh, obviously the the search engine op- optimization. But I mean, at the end of the day, people just don't know. I didn't know what it was either. People don't know what a public adjuster they, is. They don't know, and the marketing isn't there. Yeah, correct. So you got two devils against you. But you're, I can tell, you're very charismatic. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you get somebody on the phone nine times out of ten, my, I'm going to hedge your bet that you probably. Get. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But you'd probably be getting higher end and. And more selection where you can kind of pick and choose the higher end if that's what you want. But then also, how about the little guy too? You know. Yeah. I mean? I, look, at the end of the day, I don't. You know, obviously, you make a little bit more in your pocketbook when you're helping someone with a higher end home, of course. The but it's nice claim. to help somebody when no, they're that's, fucked up. That, that's the thing about it. The beauty for me is that I'm still in the the clasp of being able to help people yeah. when they're in a tough spot and i mean the other problem with public adjusting and not so much a problem but like why it's not the greatest thing to to promote it at same, the same time is that then you don't want that market to be oversaturated at the same time like a realtor when now everybody's becoming a realtor now everybody flips to being a public that's adjuster. why you got to jump the gun and start pushing right this. well that's why i, I do something like, I, i'm gonna yeah. put your name and i'm gonna put if you don't know yeah. what uh, an adjuster yeah, is or whatever right, yeah Watch this. Yeah, correct. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, and it's funny because when I go to these networking events and I go around and it's round robin and I stand up, that's the first thing I say to people. I say, who in this room knows what a public adjuster is? How many hands do you Oh, it's maybe one. What percentage would you say? Oh, so uh, let's just say there was a room of 10, so one out of 10, so right? So you only got 10%. At best. At best, right? And, and you're talking 10 people. So if you have 100, maybe 1%. Yeah, correct. And But then, then people get also confused where they're like, yeah, I know what that is because they think it's an insurance adjuster, That's which is I different, right, than a, a public insurance adjuster works on behalf of the insurance Pull company. Pull up uh, tab two, uh, Dan, to the show's website. Yeah, yeah. All right. So uh, people think insurance adjuster, you know, they, they think that that's what you mean, but it's not. I mean, public adjusting is, is completely something different. Okay. So this is the company's website. Okay, this uh, is Fox the company's Airplanes. website, yeah, right. So they actually have, they have one more office now, and that's in Boca, so that's not up there right now. But I mean, as you can go through, this gives you a little bit of a tutorial, a little bit of like what a public adjuster is. Because the other problem with it is that some people think that 
it's like some I hate to w- use the word because it has such a negative connotation behind it, but it's a scam. Yeah, it's like no, 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 no. Like we're licensed professional in the state of Florida, and you know it gives you kind of a, a synopsis of what it is. So I was so, actually yeah, so Ryan, I was at someone's house today. So Ryan, if yeah, somebody's just listening and they're not watching, yeah. today, they're on Spotify. So when when oh, you're looking yeah. at this, explain it as if somebody's listening. And so know. I mean, if you're on as in the website, kind of giving a little tutorial. Yeah, yeah. So as we're scrolling down here, you're gonna see like right down perfect example roof damage i was literally on i can show you on my phone on on uh, a homeowner today their roof looked exactly like that where tiles are broken because it's from a storm that happened and either debris or things of that nature destroyed the tiles and now rain and intrusion is going to come through the ceiling and now you're going to have you know you ever look inside your home and you see like those brown spots that are sitting on top of your ceiling that's yeah. water intrusion that's a that's a roof issue from um from um wind damage yeah, right so, so you, you got you got wind damage wind hail, hail damage, roof, roof ceiling roof. stains things of that nature yeah. Water damage right here, prime example. I mean, obviously flooding, pipe break, you know, uh, cabinet damage, hot water heater and more. Those are some of those. Fire and lightning, right? So any type of fire damage, smoke, lightning damage. We have a home that one of the circuit breakers caught on fire and lit up the entire side of this person's home and all of the... The debris or all the 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 uh, like their furniture and all of that got all, you know, smoke and things on that. Yeah. That's all covered on the insurance. Vandalism, theft. So we cover. It's not just one area that we focus on. We cover on anything within the scope, and even commercial. And that's a really big thing because a lot of people think it's just residential. You know, like think of like a, a public shopping center, right? Where you have a Publix, you maybe have a salon, and then you have like. Uh, a Jersey Mike's in it, you know, and then you you look up top and you see the tile roof and all of this damage. Or if and maybe you work in one of those those facilities and you're having leak coming from the ceiling. So even those big commercial ones, you call a public adjuster because you're like, oh, they probably have somebody. No, call a public adjuster. They come and then they do scopes and then they can replace your roof. And then that's where it's big. That's where, you know, you change your lifestyle. We have certain adjusters who really focus on just the commercial. So now if somebody wants to work with you, uh-huh. right? Would they go to five star claims no, dot com? No, or no, would no. They, how would they reach you? Yeah, no, it's great. So uh five star claims is you can reach out and you can put a, a submission through, but that doesn't that doesn't focus it straight to me. That just is kind of like it reaches out to the company and then they they, they s- they kick it out. They, to yeah, kick it, it out to whoever. Yeah. Um, so you can always email me. So it, my email is really easy. So it's Ryan at fsclaims.com. So like five star. So fs as in five star claims.com. You can always email or uh, call me. My number is 267 981 6045. Oh, you kept the filling. Yeah, I kept the filling. You know, it was funny. There was a moment where I was thinking about it and I was like, nah, there's no way I can get it. And it's funny because uh, I actually had a gentleman who called me about helping him out with his house and he's like, where is this two six seven number? And I'm like, oh, it's oh, it's from Philly. He's like, oh, he's like, yeah, I was I was I was worried about calling it, you know, because he got a little bit of marketing from yeah. me, and he's like, I was weary about where you're from, and I was just like, oh, that's strange. You I've could you could get a Google Voice and get a Florida Google Voice number that then forwards to your phone. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah, well, you, you know, for each just, but if, I mean, if that ever became, yeah, an issue. it's funny because even when I was on, uh, I felt for some reason since that happened when I was on the the radio station. I, you know, very similar, gave out my information. I was like, yes, that is a Pennsylvania number. So yeah, the people so who- you, you cut it from the game. Yeah, I had yeah. to. Because someone, when they mentioned it to me originally, I was like, oh, is that like a thing? So then yeah. I was like, you know what, let me just, I'll just say it in my spiel moving forward. So I have all that in the description for you. So yeah, that great. Great, 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 yeah. Now yeah. tell me about the commercial thing, because Dan and I are both interested in this. So yeah. So you, you get the radio commercial. Uh, tell me how you got it. Yeah, sure. Uh, how much you pay what, yeah. and what you get for it. Yeah, absolutely. And what the, um, what like the positives that you got or, or, or like the, you know, what did it generate for you? Was sure. it worth the investment? Yeah, absolutely. So I went to, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I went to a networking event and it's one of those, like not so much out of my comfort zone, but I've never gone to one before, but I was like, let me push the limits and meet new people. And cause that's all about marketing and getting yourself out there. And so I went to a networking event and I met a gentleman named Rob and I'm drawing a blank on his last name. More. And, huh? My The Rob I deal with? No, no, different Rob. Oh, Rob, okay. like something with an M. Uh, it's a longer last name. And uh, him and I chatted for a little bit. We exchanged information. And then he hit me up and he's like, 
Right, I'd love to be able to get a public adjuster on our radio station. You know, we never had one. He knows, he knew what a public adjuster was, which was a big win. Um, That's and, a start. Yeah, so because he he actually worked in the office building that Five Star is located in, in in Fort Lauderdale. So he knew because he was in that office building at one point years ago. So he knew the company. So when he knew when he were Five Star claims, he's just like. Oh, I, I know your company. I know what you do. So that made it a little bit easier, the interaction. So we, we chatted for a few and he's like, look, and there's, there's a lot of the logistics that I'm still learning because I've been about a month on it now. So, but it's part of the Florida chamber of commerce. And, um, so basically what I did is I, I paid, it was like four, it was three ninety nine plus like an application fee. Cause I got to know them and it was like four twenty five, four thirty, whatever that may be. And it's the rest of this year and all of next year. So basically I jump on his, on his, uh, radio station, uh, a couple times out of the month. It's, uh, and we go through an eight minute interview. It's, it's very similar to what we did right now, but in a very condensed version of it, we talk about what public adjusters are. I focus on sp- specific areas of public adjusting you know where if I'm, i want to tackle one specific topic i'll focus on that yeah because you only got eight minutes right correct yeah. so we focus on one area that can really capture the audience talk about it give them my information things of that nature and then on top of that every week you know like if you're listening to the radio station and they cut out and they go to the, the generic uh, not generic but they go to the commercials I have a, a paragraph commercial where someone talks on behalf of like if you have vandalism fire theft hail whatever wind damage to your home please call Ryan Rotano at you know the, the, you the got whole left for 500 bucks so it was like four and change yeah, yeah. For, and I get it for the next so the rest of this year and I get it for 20, uh, 22 and 23. But now that's AM though, right? And it's AM radio, but it's Fox AM. So it's the sports radio channel. Oh, it is a sports yeah, radio Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So it's it's that is good. it's good. Yeah, and it goes, uh, my interview gets um, goes live on Saturdays. And then my commercial goes, I don't know how many times in the day, but it goes every day at like certain windows. Um, and it's out there. And look, even if it was like it got me one, one client from it, it's successful on its own. And even not... I got to meet new people and they have the part of the chamber of commerce. So then you go on, you become a member of the chamber of commerce. So they have their own website. Then you can log on and you can go to all the free networking events that they have. I just got tickets to uh, the Panthers game in March for a networking event there. So you go before the game starts, set up a booth, a little bit of flyering, who you know who you are, things of that nature. So people that are walking and networking and doing that before the hockey game, and then after the hockey, or once the hockey game starts, you close up shop. And then I have one of the, um, uh, like the VIP, not VIP. What's what I'm looking for? Like one of the box sections. Boxies, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and why that stand cost you? No, I nothing. It's part of the it's part of the package of the three ninety nine plus. Yeah. It's Fuck, totally this guy fucking crazy. Yeah, no, I, so I don't know how it all works. <laughs> He's got a I, hole in his head or something. Yeah, I don't know if I got a little bit fortunate and his package is a little bit more, but I, I don't think it's much more than that. A little if, bit fortunate, bro. You're getting on the on totally. The, you get yeah. eight minutes a week. Yep, correct. You get played every day at some time. Yeah, no, it's a win. Box seat and a stand. And it's for great. Five hundred. I don't you know, know what, what this guy's doing and don't want to know. Yeah, but I, I want to talk to. But him. But you know, it's part of the chamber <laughs> of commerce, so you know, it's 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 a like, good thing. Yeah, no, I mean, and he's. I'm just talking. No, no, I get it. And they're good people at the end of the day, like all of them that work there the the board and uh, a few of the other representatives that are on there and it was a lot of fun just being able to like similar like here Tommy just chopping up with them getting to know them and, and it was a it was intense because the first time I did it man I was super nervous I'm in the office it's like the rate you know you get the whole microphone but it's like the this like the severe one like the you got the whole headset you got someone who's like and you know doing the count it's like 10 i'm like you know full-blown panic and then they cut over to me like he starts and then he's like all right and i probably wait wait wait. do you physically go in there once a week no so you can yeah i can do it or i can just call in so the first time i did it i was like you know what i want to be a part of like i want to embrace the moment and see it and be a part of it and go through so i can do it every week if i wanted to drive up to west palm go to their the radio station i mean it's it's multiple radio it's like the uh, second or third floor the whole floor like here is just all different radio stations yeah i know it's it's fox sports right fox sports yeah i know it's yeah uh, was it the parkland i forget i I have it i I was just there looking looking around and um so i mean when i'm sitting there and then he you know he's like all right we got ryan rotundo public adjuster five star claims all right ryan let's uh talk about you know and i was just like uh you know you got i just got so like tongue-tied and nervous because i didn't unfortunately the first time i did it i didn't go in with a, a true objective 
right? I just was going to like kind of paintbrush what a public adjuster is and touch on all different aspects instead of like honing in on like one specific. And so I've done that now moving forward. It makes it a lot easier when you have eight minutes, you focus on like, you know, denied claims. Like I was mentioning right. earlier, people that play, call on their own, they get denied. Like I was able to just focus on that. So it was a lot easier. I see. So, but, so like one time you might just do like what you would do with a roof and then you would do what correct, you would do yeah. with like a, like a mold I saw up there that was or, interesting spray paint outside of your house. Yeah. 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 And, and whatever it may, mold, yeah. remediation, you know, it doesn't have to be just yeah, because. Mold's a big thing. Mold's big. Yeah. Mold's People really realize, big. I'll fucking kill you. you yeah. Know absolutely. So black mold and, and cast iron piping. A lot of these older homes have cast iron piping, which is not good for you. And then those pipes break and it's all underneath. So there's a lot of different areas that we that I'll focus on with them. Who have when you were at these at the higher end hotels, mm -hmm. do you ever meet any like heavy hitters, like celebrities? Yeah. I mean, I understand the networking, like yeah, loaded yeah, yeah. people, you know, they could help you out, but I mean like famous type. People. I've met, but nothing where you're you're kind of not supposed to like like hey, how are you, yeah, Mr. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'll give like prime example, one of the the gentlemen that we would see a lot is uh, Adam Sandler would mm -hmm. always be at the resort, right? Because he lives like and he's got a house in Boca. So he's he's always there i mean the day i don't know if you follow him on instagram but not that long ago he did the whole like he was on a golf course and he did the happy gilmore he ran yeah. up and he hit the ball <laughs> and he filmed it and he did this whole like shout out to shoot him again okay. but it was at the resort it was yeah. on the call and I, that morning i saw him before he teed off but i wasn't like hey at, you know what i mean it's just it like you just see like him another deck another guest yeah i mean there's there's so many of those guys that roll through there that are members of the resort i mean nba players football players i mean alex rodriguez not i mean there's they're there I don't go and talk to them. You see them from afar. You know, you you maybe some of them are cool enough. Like uh, the one, uh, the the Dos Equis guy, Dos Dos Esqui, whatever. The, the whiskey guy? No, the 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 beer, the. <laughs> Dos Equis. Dos Equis. Sorry, yeah, I don't know not much. Yeah, I know you're yeah. With the beard. Yeah, he yeah. was there at the resort, and, like, yeah. a bunch of us, like, got photos with him and yeah. things like that. So some of them you can, like – but it's really frowned upon when you, as an employee, where you're trying to be – Right. Uh, well, because there. you got to think. They're, like, an Adam Sandler. Everybody yeah. wants a picture. He's going there to relax. Yeah, you're correct. I mean, and that's – and if you're the manager there that's yeah. also like, hey, let me get a photo with you're you. You're setting it's, a bad example yeah, for your employee. Yeah, correct. So you don't – you know, but he's – Adam Sandler is, like, one of the – like, he's just – dope like he if if i was going to he'd be like let's do it like bring it in let's get a photo like, nice. he's yeah he's just like from what i've seen cool cool person like it's fun to and you you have plenty of them that are really great uh but i've never like i said i was just someone that like saw them they were there we knew that they were coming in whatever that may be and you're just like you just treat it like no big funniest deal. guys in my book are Chappelle, oh, Chris Chappelle. Rock, yeah, Adam Sandler. Oh yeah, those. I mean, those. those are pretty, I think those are the top. Yeah, three. yeah. Can you yeah. think of anybody funnier? I mean, Chris, now nah. Sebastian, right? Love Matakalsko. Yeah, 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 love yeah, Sebastian, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. He's. I mean, you know, I love. You know, him he's for, a real dick in person. No, I really. Yeah, he's funny as fuck. I'll love give it him. to him. Yeah, I, he was really funny when he was wearing those black and white shoes in New York. He did. Oh yeah, show. yeah, that that yeah, one. Yeah, he's funny, but he's a dick in person. Oh, right? that's disappointing. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know that, but he's one of my favorites. I mean, I still like him though. Yeah, See, I, I, love, I could love separate him. business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent. He is funny. Him, Bert. Uh, David Lucas. David uh, Lucas. He was yeah. in here. Was he? Yeah, he's coming yeah. back in two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he opens for Chappelle and Rogan right he? now, but he's younger, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. But he's working his way. Nice. Tom Segura. Yeah. Love Tom yeah, Segura. He's funny. He's, yeah, he's, I, he's, I'm he's in. Great. I'm in. I'm in talks with him. Oh yeah, yeah. Because he's, he's got his own podcast with Burt. Right. He does. Yeah. He does. And uh, I, I, he's coming in, but he's on tour right now. Got this, it. This fucking. I, he drinks like a fish. I, they both are savages. Wow. Yeah. And. Uh, and he was just, he's 100% in, but they, dude, they're doing, I don't know how they're doing it, man. They're doing back to back to, they're going three months straight till February. No, November, because I was trying to get him in in November. November, December, January, February. They're literally going almost every just day. Pepper. I mean, so in a, when I was looking, when we were going through his schedule with him on the phone, this is the one time I did pick up the phone. Um, <laughs> he was doing about four out of seven days a week for three months straight. And I don't know if you've ever seen him like, um, like on an interview, like on Rogan or on, uh, he's been on value team, a couple of them. Yeah, he's yeah. been on this fucking guy can drink. Oh, I'm sure. And I think he's like drinking 24 seven. Yeah. 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 And to go back to back to back to back. Woo. You know, that reminds me of his, uh, maybe about 10, 15 years ago. One of my favorite comedians is, was Ron white. Mm -hmm. Part of the, um, he was part of the, uh, what was it? Blue collar. 
Yeah, the blue collar comedy guys, like when you had uh, Jeff Foxworthy and. Uh, oh yeah, Jamie Foxx is. is yeah, 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 yeah. But Ron White, uh, old bigger guy, he would smoke. He would blow through like a pack of smokes, and he would always have some form of scotch or bourbon, and he was hilarious. Love that cat. Like early two thousands. I mean, he's still good now, but there's a, there's a lot of great comedians. But I love me. I got to throw this out there because she's dead. Who was the guy that always had the the toy, and he would make the toy talk? There was a comedian, and he'd have a thing on, and he he wouldn't move his mouth, but he would make the fucking guy. My so mom loved he was a guy. ventriloquist. Yeah, like he would. He was, he was funny, but he would come on, and he'd have different like. Oh, was he in his. Vegas? Yeah, he was in Vegas. Oh, okay, yeah, uh, he was pretty big. The only reason why I know who I think you're referring to is because he won, like America's Got Talent back like 20 years or not. He won something, and then he's there. And he does that if it's the same guy. Uh, hilarious. Yeah, he's really funny. Hilarious. And, he, and he's got different. And he's got guys, different. Public- it doesn't move. Well, there's now. a couple. Actually, now that I think about he it, there's like a, talks to each other. There's a sure. bunch of them that do that. Now that I think about it, he was like the first one. That okay, it. so yeah. yeah, I forget his name. Yeah, but, anyway. but there's a bunch of them that do that. And yeah. that that stuff. That's that's tough. Oh, it's it's hilarious. Some of those guys. Because he's like talking to him. Yeah, oh, I can't even. Can you imagine yeah. remembering all those lines no, and no. studying that? And then they have arguments with each other. And yeah, able to like pause and go. It, it's it's a talent. You gotta have talent for that. That's that's good shit. I love watching that because I'm like, wow. How was that? And you're like, the whole time you're like not even paying, you're just looking at their mouth. Yeah, like, are you That's moving? what I do. I, yeah. I don't even know what he said. I'm just yeah. waiting for yeah. him. And, <laughs> just and, like, and maybe got like, you might get like a, like at best, that's what you get. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. That's funny. I haven't, those are, those are good comedians. So do you though. think you'll stick with this for more than a year? No, yeah, 100%. <laughs> I'm, I'm in it for, I'm in it for a long time. I mean, unless something, I mean, the, the problem with, not so much a problem with public adjusters is that insurance companies are, Tough to deal with. Well, not so much that, but they're they're always they're trying to eliminate a public adjuster, and the there's like I said, not every state has them, right? Mm-hmm. So the the state is always, or you know, insurance companies are fighting against us because we are, which is the crazy thing about it. We're trying to fight and get homeowners money for their loss. Insurance companies don't want us there because they want to make more money and not pay out what they're responsible for. It's like when I pay you to support me when an incident. It's not like I'm calling you on a Tuesday because it rained kind of hard. Like I'm calling you because I got a problem and I need to be compensated. That's why I'm paying you all these years. And it, and it's disappointing too because insurance companies will just drop you on. You know, like I said, like they'll just drop you on a Tuesday for any reason because they don't care. Maybe they're getting out of the zip. They want it. They're they're leaving Florida. They're leaving here. They're, they're, they'll just drop you. And then a lot of people are nervous to put claims into their home because they're like, I don't want anything bad on my record. And it's like, it's not, you have a problem with your home. You have all of these damages. Like, that's what insurance is for. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, be there for it. Be in that moment. Like, and that's where you're trying to comfort homeowners going through it. But yeah, no, I love it. I love being able to what I can do. And I'm hoping it branches in different directions. If you push at it, well. Yeah, no. And like the biggest thing, Tommy, is, and that's what hopefully this platform helps is, is getting people to understand that there is support out there if you have problems with your home is being able to call someone that can get out there. Like I said, I was at someone's house this morning helping him out. He's got a kitchen that's his kitchen sink is leaking down below. Send out a remediation company that's going to come out tomorrow. He's got roof problems. Going to be able to put in a, a decent sized claim on for him so that he can get things to fix his home. I would say this from the outside. Don't call insurance, call Ryan. Yeah, that's it. Period. 100%. End of discussion. Yeah, and right? look, and even if I'm not in your geographical area, call in a public adjuster, have someone represent you for, for whatever it's worth across the board for any public adjuster. So have you've got to make that. You got to make that nationwide, yeah, and yeah. then get networking where you got guys in Cali, you got guys in Texas. You're, yeah. thinking, you know, you're condensing yourself. You yeah, got, yeah. You got to be the guy that takes the call if somebody's in Cali, and then hit them with a broker fee. Yeah, you know what I, mean? I mean, not every like I said, I, I don't know if Cali off the top of my, head, but I get your point. Well, not, not every Cali, state have, you know, but yeah, I mean, it's and certainly like even like Orlando, you know, you can live there, but insurance claims aren't as as um prominent right yeah. as south florida it's it's definitely like if you go jupiter down that's where you're really in that niche of i mean there's plenty of public adjusters that live in orlando but you know you don't have a lot of like for instance tile roofs you don't really see them in orlando it's all shingle roofs right so shingle roofs they don't get physically beat up as bad they don't they don't withstand time as good as tile but if you get a bad storm and debris hits a tile roof and shatters your tile it's not going to do it the shingle shingle is not going to shatter 
But tile roofs, a lot of them are made of like clay, and they break pretty easy. You get a power washer that goes up there. They spray hard enough on older tiles that are like 15, 20. They'll shatter your, you know, those tiles. Now, granted, that's not an insurance claim, but, you know, those those w- tiles down here are more susceptible for oh, breakage. Yeah. You know. Now, has any of these implements that have been put in by, by this admin, or even the last admin, has any of that affected this business in a negative way no not so much in that perspective uh it's more of just what's there's there's laws that get passed um you know every year uh in insurance companies right right so insurance companies will change their so you know you have a home you have an insurance uh your policy is going to be different than the next person who's next door to you a that's a, a different company, and then they have different regulations. So, I'll insurance study. companies will what they're doing now is is changing the policy to make it harder to put claims on your own home, which is crazy, right? So, I'm paying you for insurance company so that if I have a problem, I can call you. But now, what they're doing is they're writing bylaws in it that are basically stating you if you have water damage, you know now you have a 10k cap. So, you may have damage that maybe your your laundry machine leaked, and now you got a foot of water that not only affected, you know, the, the, the laundry room, but it went into the, the dining room, which is a different floor that went into the bedrooms that are a different floor. And, and now you have probably $30,000 worth of flooring that needs to be fixed. But now insurance companies say the most you can get is 10. Yeah. So they're capping on. So they're making it more difficult for public adjusters to be able to help homeowners to some degree. That's And they're finding little laws, you know. Loopholes. Where right. They can and that, do it, right. that makes it more difficult. For instance, if a, if a storm takes place today, like a either a, a hurricane or a tropical storm, you basically have up until two years to be able to file a claim on an insurance uh, on that particular storm. Once two years, so you can't, I can't be like, you know what, uh, you know, in two years from now or two and a half years from now, put a claim in that just happened today. They'll be like, it's outside of the window. Now you can't put a claim in. You have to do it in. With, so, so they're like, making it more difficult. Okay. So like in my business, right? Like when I do marketing, mm-hmm. Google, I like three years ago with all blogs, mm-hmm. they, they wanted a blog and then a link in that blog to your website okay. and that would help you rank. Right. But then everybody get caught wind of it. Okay. Of how to get it to rank. And then they cut that. So now all that work you did with the blog to link to a website right. was bullshit. Yep. Right. Because they're constantly updating kind of like your thing. Yep. So that it forces you to buy ads, Mm -hmm. which is what they're in business. They're in fucking business, right? So they don't want you to manually rank on page one. They want you to spend five hundred, a thousand a month to rank on page one where you're paying them. So they're constantly updating. So one day it's backlinks. Then it's like meta just it's it's like all these little adjustments that they do that if you're not up to date on it, we'll literally, I mean, you'll go from page one to 10 overnight because of the update. Jeez. So it's like the insurance. They're yeah. constantly trying to beat you. They're yeah. trying to beat me. And like my doctor, another prime example, he uh, uh, pr- probably, well, he's the top in, in Palm Beach, mm-hmm. that's for sure. And he was taking insurance. Well, he was a, a good doctor. So say you had AD or uh, say you had anxiety attacks mm-hmm. like crazy, right? There's a huge difference between generic Klonopin and brand name Klonopin. There's a lot of drugs that are the same, that there's no difference. But with Klonopin, for example, you know, if prescribed and you actually need it not to get fucked up, there's a massive difference between the generic and the brand name. So he would prescribe the brand name because that's what works better for his patient, right? Well, he was constantly for years fighting with fucking insurance companies because they were like, well, why the fuck aren't you writing generic? And him and his secretary, well, it's not, you know, I got a guy who's shaking half the day yeah, yeah. thinking he's dying. He's got anxiety or PSD or whatever it may be. So then he said, you know, he went on out on a, a, a branch basically. And he said, fuck it, cash only. Moved over to Palm Beach Island, 400 an hour cash. You don't want to pay it? Don't come. He's booked solid. I'm sure. Because now you go there and if you need something, whether, you know, because the big pharma will push to prescribe you like uh, amoxicillin, mm. right? But really you need z mm-hmm. but the, the amoxicillin is cheaper for the fucking insurance sure, company. Sure. So now you take the fucking amoxicillin, but it doesn't quite kick it. So now you go back and you say, doc, it's been fucking seven to 10 days. I'm still sick. Now you put in for the z So now they make double their money. You know what I mean? That, that's just one yeah, example. Yeah, it's a game. So he got sick and tired of this shit after 20 years, and he just said, fuck it, whatever happens, happens. 
And he's getting no the fucking asshole just upped it to four. I'm friendly, yeah, 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 so yeah, I can yeah, call him yeah, an yeah, asshole. Yeah. Now it, for he's four twenty five an hour, but one one thing's for sure and two things are for certain. Yeah, if you're sick, if you get the epi, if you get the issue that's going on, you'll get the right shit. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. not going to go into a place and play the that game. says, "Oh, you have a cold, you have it. Mm. Mark it down." Nah, nah, nah yeah. not here. Yeah. You go in, you either have it or you don't. That's and if you enough. do, yeah. you get the right shit, not yeah. what the farmer wants to give you. If yeah, you know sure, what I'm saying. sure. I got to be real it. gentle with the word. Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah, it's that's interesting. That's but it, it all is in relation to what sure, I'm saying sure. with you. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, that's it's the game, man. And it's just like they're trying. And that's why I said, like, so longevity, sure. I I have no I have no plans in getting out of it unless they force us out. And they, and they just they make it more difficult every year. And it's, but I mean, it's it's. Just like anything, everything anything changes. You gotta it always makes adjust. right. Yeah. So I mean, at the, the the pure basis of it is, you know, if you you have an um, a, you know issue with your home and you need some help, that's what we're here for it. And uh, and getting the the word out about public adjusters and maybe it's huge. And, and I mean, for me, it, then it becomes what else is nice about it where not everybody knows about it. Then it becomes this this spider web effect too, right? So you help someone with their home, and then they tell their friends like, hey, and, or maybe they come in and they're like, oh, I got my kitchen sink oh i got ryan he actually helped me out and you yeah. know and that's like uh plumbers or pe- can become our best friends because they're in people's homes quite often and they get to see issues within because you know you have a leak underneath your kitchen sink a lot of people just pick up the phone and call a plumber to fix it and now a plumber can be like hey my buddy ryan's a public adjuster you have an insurance claim here if you'd like have him come out, look at it, and he might be able to put an insurance claim on your home to be able to get you compensated properly because now you're shelling out two to three hundred bucks to fix this, and that's. But it also caused so much damage now within your cabinets because now the the plumbing may have just you stopped the water leak, but the water now created mold. See, I don't see that them. happening. I think I think eight times out of ten that won't happen because the plumber's going to want the money himself. Well, no, the plumber gets the work, no doubt. Like they go in, but they he do wants it. it now. No, and he will. So you go. So and and the the perfect scen- uh, like scenario is a plumber gets the call. They go out to the home and they fix the problem. They 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 put on like they remedy it right so they get paid out for what it is but then they say to the homeowner by the way because there's more damage oh, outside okay. so of they, their scope they fix it and right then, okay. and then i can come in and be like hey because they fixed reimbursed. it and i can get them reimbursed for that and they also there's probably more damage that has outside of the scope of a plumber you know that's now there's mold underneath there now we have to get tear those cabinets out makes dry the area out send out a remediation company and now that you just tore up the cabinets now you have to f- replace the cabinets, and then that's that part. You of killed that. right there, by the way. Yeah, I set you up to see how you dance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, <laughs> sure, yeah, that was a good. That was back. good. Yeah, but, but it was good information. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah. No, I mean it's that's the thing is you know uh, plumbers can be you know no, best friends, yeah. and it's just and it's just letting and it's not it's just letting a homeowner know hey by the way if you want my buddies that not there's no force in this like i'll come out and even do a free inspection in your home like i'll yeah. come out and be like you got something yes no you don't sorry it was great meeting you but if you know anybody like i do free inspections all the time i mean that's i can see how that would work hand in hand like maybe there's something you can't do but you know a plumber yeah, yeah and, and that's, that's a, and that's where the networking is yeah so big and that happens quite often too there's going to be a time so the other like you know, whenever I'm able to get someone compensated for damages within their, their, let's say, let's say I'm there before the plumber ever gets there. And now we, I send out a team that goes out there and then they fix the plumbing issue, right? They just stop it. Not a true plumber, but remediation. Yeah, company. Yeah, yeah. Now, once the homeowner gets fixed, now I can send the plumber out and get him the job. Or if I know a guy who's handy, who is a general contractor, who knows how to do kitchen work, I can say to the to the homeowner, now that you have a twenty five dollar a twenty five thousand dollar check in your hand, I got a buddy of mine who rebuilds kitchens. Give him a call. He'll cut you a deal on. And it's it's all if it's I eat, you eat, shakes. we all eat, and yeah. we all help each other Good. out. Good so I mean that's that's the but it's it's crazy how many people especially like plumbers in general are very like they don't want to they just want to go and and leave. Yeah. Yeah, they're worried because I'm not taking anything from you. But they think you are. Right, and yeah. it's weird because it's like, no, go do it. But, you know, as you do this long, you'll meet the right people yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that aren't yeah. like that. Because yeah. when I had my engineering company, like when I had to call a plumber or an uh, electrician, there is no way in hell that they're calling you. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, But, but then it, again, I you know, I wasn't out there networking, and yeah, have, yeah. but I didn't give a fuck because I wasn't – Yeah, I didn't need it. You right, know, I had right. already done the breaker, yeah. so I didn't fucking need it. But 
you know, in your situation, it would be good to find like one of each to help each other that, you know, is willing. Yeah. You know? And I mean, even with like a plumber, it's just one of those like you're in we're the just home. using a plumber as an example. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, and then all, all it is is just you tell the homeowner like, hey, I got a buddy who may be able to help you. And then whether or not they want to, then it's on the homeowner. Like all you, I'm not asking you to, you just, here, here's some information. You have a problem here, ma'am or mister, and here's his, I have a buddy who might be able to help you out. That's it. And then I come and and, 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 and plumber does his thing and he leaves anyways. And then maybe at some point when that homeowner does need some, then I can give that referral work to that gentleman. And then that's how we work on referral. I help, you know, here, here's a job for job type of thing. And then we all work harmoniously. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, world. I've learned a lot today. And I, yeah, yeah, I, I, I think it. that, uh, I learned a lot. Yeah, it's it's. I learned a lot. I learned there's so much to it every single day, you know. Uh, whether or not whatever industry you're in, but in in this particular niche, man, there's just when it comes to insurance, it's intense. There's a lot of a lot of things you need to know and be educated on to be able to on be an advocate for the homeowner, be able to to know how to talk to the insurance company, know where you can and where we can go and what this is. And there's, it's not as, it's not like cookie cutter. Like there's a lot to it and it's, it's an intense, uh, intense industry. You and you make, don't want to mess someone's house up. You should make a, a t-shirt F insurance. Yeah. F insurance. Call ride. Yeah. Call ride. That's it. <laughs> right? I mean, and it's, it's, you don't want to mess someone's home up too. You want to, you want to do it right by them. That's, that's, that's a tricky thing. Okay. Yeah. So give uh, the number to call for. Yeah, you. absolutely. So give me, and give this me, will be in the description as well. Yeah. So okay. Why. So give me a holler. My cell phone is uh two, six, seven, Nine eight one six zero four five, and you can always email me at ryan at fsclaims.com. All right. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, Ryan. I, I learned a lot. I think it. you might help out a lot of people. Yeah, because, absolutely. I hope know. so. I hope so. That's how I'm really going to title it. Like, yeah, that, yeah. yeah. I, that's what that's what I'm here for. Because as soon as they, you know, as long as they click, and help. just watch a little bit. Yeah. You know, I mean, shit. I mean, I had no idea. I guarantee you. I guarantee you, eighty-five percent don't know. Yeah, what the hell I. You did. It may be even higher than that. Yeah, it's crazy to think about. So that I hope you push it. I yeah, hope I hope you expand yeah, nationwide, absolutely. and I wish nothing but the best. Thank you, and I appreciate for having me on. I appreciate I'll, your hospitality. Absolutely, and yeah. I'll definitely be in contact. Yeah, with yeah, you. yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll need to go get a drink sometime. Well, I gotta, I gotta have somebody to text you. Yeah, o'clock yeah in the morning. that's true. <laughs> Maybe I'll be up. Maybe. All right, Ryan. Hey, thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank, thank you. Sir. Thank you for coming in. Appreciate it.